Everything in this universe has a beginning. The Big Bang. The formation of nebular matter into stars and planets. The first collections of amino acids in the Earth's oceans. The first creatures to leave them. The first mammals. The first primates that walked upright. The first religion. The first printing press. And ultimately, the first synthesizer. Robert A. Moog created the first practical, playable instrument way back in the late 60s. And no matter how powerful the synthesizers of our day, nothing comes close to that lovely, warm and organic sound of a Moog synthesizer. Here is an example for you to ponder.
welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Sunday. It's been a few weeks, yes. Happy New Year, everyone. It is 2019. It is no longer 2018. The year of... Uh, now it's 2019, the year of potential... Uh, we don't know what's going to happen yet. So welcome, everyone. Hope you all had a good Christmas and a good New Year. Thank you so much for still being around. Uh, apologies for the last few weeks we've not had a show. Just due to various Christmas, New Year and family shenanigans. You know how it is at this time of year. We all get carried away doing all those things. And there just hasn't been time, unfortunately, to get the show done. So we're back now. We're back. So how is everyone? I hope you're all well. I hope you're all fine and dandy. We do have some new people in the chat. I can see Blanco Blanco there. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, so I'll quickly explain for all of you what this show is. Uh, I am building my own Warhammer army, the unending forces of the Holy Contrivance. It's a kind of randomly built imperial army of just, I like that model, I'll buy it. Um, but it's going to be themed, the look of it is going to be themed on the Principality of Zeon from the Mobile Suit Gundam universe. So all the paint jobs are going to be tip of the hat to uh, the uh, Principality of Zeon. Uh, and it's going to have lots of knights and scions and all kinds of bits and bobs. And so far we've done a knight and I've done some, built some scions and I've built my Torox. Almost finished that. I've got to paint the two dudes. And each one, each uh, each weekend, I just spend time doing my Warhammer army. Uh, and on a Sunday, I just make it a three hour live stream just so you guys can hang out and join me. Might as well. May as well have a hangout in the chat. Basically, I sit here and just respond to chat for three hours and try and get some work done. And usually don't get much work done. Uh, just uh, making sure, can you all hear me and see me okay? Just because obviously I do the usual checks and tests before we go live, but I want to make sure I'm not too quiet or too loud or too not visible. Uh, yes, so I will work on my army, and while we go along, uh, you can all hang out in the chat. Uh, now, as always, uh, I depend on your questions. I depend on you giving me things to talk about. So if you have any questions or have any things you want me to talk about, just stick it in the chat. I've got the chat over here on my iPad. Stick it in the live chat. Now, if you're watching this and you can see the chat here, ooh, big finger, you can see the chat here, but you can't see where you would type into the chat. That means you're watching it, not on YouTube. So you need to make sure you need to go to the YouTube channel and watch it there where it's live. All you need to do is hit the little YouTube icon, which is down here somewhere in the bottom right hand side, just near my iPad keyboard, apparently. Uh, click on that and it will automatically take you to the YouTube page where you can see the live chat and you can join in. And it is worth joining in because everybody in chat is awesome. They're all cool people. Uh, and I'm going to be giving away some sticky stickers later on and you need to be in the chat to win that. Uh, as always, if you want to ask me a question, just stick it in chat. But do try and put it in big fat capital letters so I can have a chance of seeing it because I'll be looking down here doing stuff. I won't see what's going on in chat that easily. So put it in big fat capital letters. Uh, or if you want to, you can use the super chat, which is a little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window. That just puts your comment in a big colour box and makes a little noise that I can hear on my computer over there on the other side of the room. It lets me know, so I'll know I won't miss your comment. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to get on with that. Uh, as always, we are doing our doo -doo -doo, stream boss battle. Aviad Madar is still the current stream boss. It's been a bit slow of late you know, over the last few shows. People, uh, you know, not knocking his health down. What this is, is basically... Uh, I make one of you, or well, let's start that again, shall we? Stream boss battle. One of the viewers, in this case Aviad, is the stream boss. He has 100,000 health. Uh, and every time you do a super chat or a tip to the chip jar, or every time someone new subscribes to the channel, it takes a bit of his health down. He's down to 76,054 at the moment. Basically, uh, all the money raised through getting his health down to zero goes into a big pot. And whoever gets his health to zero actually wins all the money in that pot. Well, they don't win the money. What they do is they then tell me what they want me to order for them from Games Workshop or Forge World, and I order it and send it to them. And it's usually around about two or three hundred quids worth of good stuff. Um, so what you need to do, if you want to uh, get in there and get his health going down a bit, you can either, if you're not already subscribed to this channel, then like the channel, subscribe, uh, and that will take a tiny bit of his health off. You can do a tip to the tip jar, which is down here. It is streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru. Or, like I said a moment ago, you can do a super chat. And every time you do a super chat, it takes a little bit of his health off. Now, the, the more you put through a super chat or the more you put through as a tip, the more health comes off. So, you know, $1 may take off so much, $5 may take off even more. So, it's all about being tactical. But whoever gets him to zero will become the new stream boss and will win 
several hundred quids worth of stuff. Now, Aviad was the last person that won, uh, and he won himself 280 quids worth of Warhammer goodness. He got he got the Knight's Renegade set, he got the Kill Zone, Kill Zone? No, Kill Team set, and loads of extra bits and bobs. So it's worth playing along. It's gone a bit slow, because it's in the middle zone. It's like an eBay auction where all the all the sniping and, and sort of bidding stops halfway through until it gets towards the end. So it's in that kind of slow zone at the moment. So, yeah, just feel free. I say, whoever, all the money that it raises goes towards the pot that then goes towards buying you if you win the cool prizes. So, let's have a quick look at the chat. Now we've done all the usual blurb. Uh, we have uh, Blanco Blanco. I do want to point out first who came in the chat and says, uh, uh, not sure how long I'll be able to stay. Is it 1.50 a.m. in Oz? Lol. But welcome. Welcome, Blanco Blanco. Blanco Blanco. Get that right, Blanco Blanco. Good eye, bro. Welcome to the show. I uh, hope you enjoy it. I hope you can stay for a while. Apparently it's like 40 degrees in Australia at the minute because it's the middle of summer. He says it's 40 degrees. 40 goddamn degrees for the Americans watching that Celsius, not nonsense Fahrenheit that you guys use. We use proper temperatures. Um, it's <laughs> Sorry. It's 40 degrees. That's like that's like the skin melting off. Now, I'm sure to Australians that's like a bit of a warm day. But to us here in the UK, that's like surface of the sun or something. So, yeah, 40 I don't think it even got to 40 degrees when we had a big heat wave this summer here. So, wow. In this room right now, it's probably about, I don't know, 20 degrees, maybe? Not that hot, but I am sweating a bit because I've got all the lights on and stuff. So, but yeah, here in, the, here in the UK, it's probably about 5 or 6 degrees at the minute. 40, wow, that's just, oh, that's the summer that is. Who do we have in? We have Chris from Gross Models. Dad is in. Welcome to both of you two. Uh, obviously both mods. Uh, you'll probably you'll find on my streams if you've not watched one of these before. There's about 300 mods in the chat. Just because I make all my mates mods. Because <laughs> I never know who's going to be around to mod in the chat. So I just make a load of my mates mods and you end up with like 27, you know, 75 percent mods in the chat, which means it's really well behaved. Um, Pascal Leaverse. He's. Uh, yeah, I am still here. How is everyone? He was actually in when I posted up the thing today about half ten this morning. He said, first, uh, uh, Hendarian's, I can't read that, it's too far away. Hendarian's Bush Rage. Welcome, new name, don't recognise that name. Welcome, Hendarian's Bush Rage. He says, hi, Tyrone Key is in, welcome. Candy Grand for Mongo is in, Candy Grand for Mongo. Chris Smith says, afternoon all, apparently it's his first time in, or he's been able to get in. He says, finally made it after weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks real life got in the way. Or Christmas, as we like to call it. Uh, David Butcher, that model is in. Welcome, Dave. So finally remember to sign in as the right account. Uh, Roadkill Raker, welcome. Uh, Nimson Durin is in. Dude, welcome, welcome. Uh, Vincent from Mr. Lowe's Model Making is in. Uh, he's, a, he's a newborn mod. I realised he wasn't a mod for some reason, so I made him mod again. I'll, I'll make my mates mods just because I never know who's going to be in. Although it usually turns out that most of them are in. So, yeah. Uh, so else, uh, Wayne Haywood is in. Welcome, Wayne. What, uh, Mark Dale, welcome to both of you. Blanco, Blanco, how hot is it there? Yes, yeah, not very. Uh, who else do we have? Do do do. Uh, Candy Ruffin Mongo Fox's music is excellent, and it's very generous of him to make it available. I guess. Thank you very much. Yes, if you don't know this, all the music I do, apart from my own personal theme tune, which I use, which is the one with the porno elevator sax music yeah um everything except that i do all my music is public domain which means if you've got your own youtube channel and you're looking for music for your videos there's actually a playlist on this channel if you go to my playlists there is a playlist with all my tunes on there uh, it was available to download in other places but that website's gone now but um if you want if you if you want just some free public domain music so you can use it however you want there's no reason to give me a credit or an attribution or anything like that um, there is a playlist and it's all public domain. There's loads of tunes on there. Do with them as you wish. I made them years and years and years ago. I know I'd ever sold two CDs, so I thought, screw it, I'll just make them public domain. All apart from my theme tune, which isn't public domain because it's my theme tune. So, yeah. Uh, Mark Dale says, even got my son Max watching upstairs as he paints his knee orcs. Welcome, Max. Hello, welcome. I'm, wait, I don't know where the camera is. There's the camera. Hello. Paint those orcs. Send pictures to the boom hut so we can see how cool they are. Orcs, yeah, daka daka. Uh, Candy Grove for Mongo, Standing Gold, that's one I was doing the National Anthem. Do, do, do. Uh, Borry Models is in, welcome Borry Models. Wayne Haywood, uh, welcome, welcome. Scott Sutherland from Orkney is in, welcome Scott. Uh, do, 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 do. Who else have we got? What else is going on in chat? Uh, Jamie Bone is in, welcome Jamie, Jamie. I am almost finished, 
on the next episode of the um, um, Warhammer Conquest, Jamie. I'm just in the process of painting the the squiggly tank at the minute. Uh, you know, doing the doing the squidgy tank, and then uh, episode four will be up. So, because you've been asking me about that. Uh, when will end times come to 40k? What do you think? Says Hendarian's Bush Rage. I don't know. I don't know. I think before they do end times, they'll do the Emperor wakes up and kicks ass. I think it's more likely at some point the Emperor will be restored in some way that means suddenly the whole universe doesn't collapse because he, he suddenly has no longer protecting from all the nastiness in the warp. So they'll do it somehow. Um, there'll be the star child in there somewhere, probably something like that. And he'll come back and he'll basically then, he'll sit, although I don't know, because if they do that, it's all kind of running. The Empire's running against his wishes, like the whole religious hymn of the Emperor God and the whole Inquisition thing. He, he won't like that. He won't like that at all. So, hmm, I don't know. I don't know. They probably won't change it. There's, there's too much material to do yet. Uh, let's have a look. Hendarian says, why not? Primaris are going to fade out. Mini Marines, and personally, I think Inari will fade out Aspect Warriors too. I just think Games Workshop will take a less aggressive approach with 40k. Uh, ooh, uh, Subame, thank you very much for your subscription. I appreciate it. Very much appreciate it. Uh, DJW Calio 7 says, oh man, I really missed this live stream. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do do Pascal is always really early. I think he's in my live chat for next week already, says Gross Models. <laughs> he's always early. He's always like about three hours early. Uh, Mark Dale asks, has anyone been to the Warhammer world in Nottingham? Max is now nagging me to go. Is it worth it? Absolutely, Max. You've got... Don't stop nagging him till he takes you. This is why you don't want to tell me that Max is upstairs watching this, because I'm going to say, Max, keep nagging your dad until he takes you. Uh, I'd love to go. I would love to go, except it's in Nottingham and I can't be bothered driving more than five minutes. I will go at some point when I've saved up a lot of money uh, because I'll probably spend all my money. But I do want to go at some point because it's Warhammer World. I mean, just, oh. You can look at all the awesome, awesome sort of heavy metal kits and things, and all the massive dioramas they've got. I need to blow my nose. I've got a really runny nose today. And if you're a regular viewer, you know that the moment I turn on my lights and camera on, my nose runs like a tap. Oh, I don't know why. Oh, there we are. So, yes, Max. Keep nagging your dad. Dad, Max's dad. Just just take him. Just, just sort it out. <laughs> Sorry. I've made an enemy now. <laughs> I made a friend and an enemy at the same time. Uh, Blanco Blanco says, As it's night, it's only 20 degrees centigrade, but even at 7pm, it can be 30. Oh, I mean, we suffered this summer with a heat wave over here, and that just meant it got to about 30 during the day. And in the evenings, it was about 20. And for us, that was the worst thing in the world, because we're, we're, you know, in Britain. So we don't get that kind of temperature, so... So for you to say it's 30 in the evening, because bear in mind, we don't have air conditioning over here. Most of us, we don't, because we never need it. So unlike in the US or Australia, where you're used to it, you have air conditioning, it's fine. Over here, yeah, office buildings have air conditioning, so, yes. Do -do -do. Tyrone Key says, uh, 40k is fine the way it is, so they won't blow up the universe like they did with fantasy. I don't know. They'll do something. They're obviously bringing Primarchs back and so on slowly. So they'll they'll make changes as they go along. They will change the fluff and the lore over time. But I don't I don't know how they'll do. Because the idea is if the if the emperor if the emperor truly dies or the emperor's golden throne breaks and no longer works, for whatever reason the emperor stops having his psychic barrier protecting the universe from the warp, um, then all hell will break loose and everything will fall apart. So I don't know how they bring him back without breaking that but they might do but i don't know it's all complicated i've been studying the law a little bit unfortunately instead of studying the fluff that's relevant to me playing a game i've been studying all the fluff that's relevant to the entire history of the universe and not actually anything that would be useful in a game but never mind it's all fun i uh, just heard a loud and mark dale says just heard a loud surprise scream upstairs guess he just heard his name daka daka appears to be being shouted <laughs> Daka Daka. I like it. <laughs> hey, Max. Uh, everybody's talking about what they'll do to the future of 40k. I don't think they'll do too much drastic to it because it's working quite nicely for them. Um, and if they mess with it too much, they risk a lot. Because don't forget, they've got a trillion models out there now. If they suddenly change everything, if they do a end times like they did with Age of Sigmar, 
Yeah, and that's, that's a lot of problems. But, uh, you know, the, the reason they kind of did the end times with Age of Sigma or with fantasy and changed it to Sigma was that fantasy wasn't doing that well, whereas 40k was. It was that kind of time when they started revamping everything. Um, so they just kind of like killed it and started again. And it was like a reboot. But with 40k, it's so successful. I don't think they'll need to. They'll, they'll I think they'll make changes that add to the existing products. I don't think they'll suddenly say, right, there you go, bang, everything's now out of date and everything you'll need is new. I don't think they'll do that because there's too much invested. No, 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 no. Just heard, Dad, you've been foxed. Sort it out, please. <laughs> uh, it's too late now. I've unleashed that monster, I'm afraid. Actually, the aircon in my room is stuffed, so I just bought a really powerful fan and it's goddamn awesome, says Blanco Blanco. However, unfortunately... Fans don't actually work while they're turned off. So a fan will keep you cool while there's air blowing and drawing the heat off your skin. But as soon as you're not actually in the place of the fan anymore, it's kind of a false economy. It's air conditioning's better if you've got it. Uh, Jamie Bone has just finished his lunch roast dinner with a fudge pudding. Oh, I'm starving. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Anyway, anyway, that's a lot. quick look through the chat. Welcome to all of you in the chat. If you are watching, like I say, and you've not got access to the chat, Hello, anyway. If you want to send me uh, a question or something to talk about <clears throat> and you can't get access to the chat, I need to clear my throat. Hang on. That's better. Yeah, if you haven't got access to the chat but you want to send me a question or a shout out or anything like that, you can do. Just send it to send me an email, fox at modelmakingguru.com. Uh, and I will check my email. I don't think we've got any questions in there for the sticker giveaway later on. Uh, Aviad Madara is in. He says, welcome back, Fox. Happy New Year, everyone. Yes, Happy New Year, dude. Uh, have I got any emails in yet? Nothing yet. I've got an email from Patreon. Never mind. Uh, yes, we'll do some sticker giveaways later on. Uh, and as always, I'll ask questions and answers. So if you want to send me a question and an answer to use during the sticker giveaway session, I'll get I'll send you a sticker as a reward if I read your question out. So it's fox at modelmakingguru.com, which is there. Uh, right, what are we going to be doing today? Well, I need to scratch my nose. Um, in the last episode, we were doing something. What was I doing? I was working on... Oh God, I forgot to get it out, didn't I? Hang on. Hang on. Uh, when last we met, I was working on this puppy. My uh, uh, chimera, chimera, whatever that is, which is now builded. And assembled it did. Uh, so that's ready to be primed and painted it did. It's all assembled now. I can remove the turret and that comes off quite nicely when it comes to painty painty time, or it will do when I turn it the right way. So that is all done. Uh, so that's just waiting for painting painting. Now what I'm doing with a lot of these kits is I'm getting them built up but not painted yet, just to get them out of the way. So I've not got boxes in. I've got like a whole uh, what have I got? I've got a Valkyrie and a Renegade set that's taken up space on top of my shelves there that I need to just get out and build so I've not got a big box sitting around. Um, so I'm building stuff and then I'm going to paint it later. I haven't yet decided on the colour scheme for my Imperial Guard. Uh, like I've said before, I'm doing a Principality of Zeon themed army. So for example, uh, my Tempestus Scions, I'm going to have three Imperial Knights. I've got my Imperial Knight, my bog standard uh, Zaku. Remember, it's Zeon theme. My bog standard Zaku, which is an Imperial Knight just painted green shades of green. It's filthy and dirty. I've done that one. Uh, then I'm going to have a Goof, which will be a blue coloured uh, Imperial Knight, a little bit cleaner. And then a Char's Zaku, which will just be a nice red Imperial Knight, nice and clean and shiny. So I'm going to have Char in there with his own Zaku, which is being Imperial Knight. Uh, I've got a Turox and some Tempesta Sounds that they'll be like Char's personal forces. So they'll be all in reds and things like that. I've done the Torox, I've just not finished the, not painted the figures yet, the, the scions. Haven't yet decided what colours to do my bog standard Imperial Guard, so I'm working on some colour schemes, so that's why I'm not painting stuff just yet, to make space in my collection, get rid of some boxes, and also because I haven't decided the colours yet, so stay tuned for that, that's there. What we're going to do today, I've also got my little sentinel that I've not painted yet, what we're going to do today is clear another box, I'm going to start working on my Hydra. Again, just to get the box just done and dusted so the box is out of the way and I can put it on a shelf and it's ready then for painting. Uh, so the Hydra, if I understand correctly, uh, is basically another tank but it's used as an anti-aircraft platform. Or uh, you can use it as a bombardment, almost like a mobile mortar platform effectively. Let's see what the blurb says. 
Uh, it's one of these old kits where it gives you, the, this is your data sheet basically. There's really nothing going on there at all. Uh, vehicle tanked, open topped. Okay. So if I remember rightly, let's have a look. Uh, twin linked storm shard mortars. Yes. So you've basically got a mobile mortar platform for bombarding your enemy on the ground. Or you can have the uh, twin linked hydro auto cannon, which is primarily for anti aircraft, but you can use it as anti infantry as well. Now, I've not decided which one to do yet. I don't know. I'm not going to go to all the steps of magnetizing and. Uh, well, then again. I was debating about magnetizing, but I just can't be bothered to be honest. I could just make more than one. I could make one with one weapon and one with the other. One with the storm shard and one with the um, what was it all called? Storm shard mortars and the hydro auto cannon. But the weapons actually just slot onto that little stalk that sticks out the side of the weapon, so I could just not glue them on, and therefore I could swap them out as I need to. Some people do magnetize it, but frankly, I'm being lazy and I can't be bothered. I may have to magnetize my imperial knights a bit. I've done one imperial knight so far, and I just glued it all together. And it's a real pain to fit in any traveling case. So, yeah. Mm. yeah. Let's have a look. Uh, chat, some things come up. Well, if Aviad is here, I can't write, I can't ring any history questions because he'll answer them all, says Nim. <laughs> yes, Nim sends me questions on history and then Aviad answers them all. Uh, what is the ratio on glue and plastic when making sprue glue? Uh, I'll tell you that in a minute. Did I glue in the gunner on my... Uh, Chimera, yeah. the The turret isn't glued on, but the the whole the whole turret is assemblated. Uh, I did work, wonder whether I should, and I realised painting the guy isn't going to be that hard to get to him. To be honest, it's only going to have a simple colour scheme, so I can pretty much get to everything there that I need to paint. So that's all glued in place. So it's anything. I'll, I'll try and keep figures and things separate if I think I can't get to them. To paint them, which is why for my sentinel, let me get my sentinel. Where's my sentinel? For my super sneaky, sneaky, sneaky sentinel, because it's been all sneaky and it's all squished down, it's all it's all low down because it's hiding behind a hedge or something. Um, although I won't take it off now, or I can take it off, I think. Uh, this looks like I have built it all. However, I need I know that I need to be able to paint the figure. So so what I've got is actually that. That's done and dusted, and that's the outer shell. So I know now I can paint the entire figure and then get that back on there, so no problem at all. It takes a bit of cajoling to get it back on, but it does actually work. So with that one, I left that off. With the with the Chimera, I can kind of get to the guy, even though he's in the turret, so it's not a problem. Uh, right, a sprue glue asks, who asked that? Nicholas, what is the ratio of this to that? If I can get it out. This is sprue glue. What is sprue goo? I'm going to stop saying sprue glue. Uh, what is sprue goo? Because a few people have asked me, what is sprue goo? Sprue goo is a pot of Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, which is a uh, welding cement. It has to be a welding cement. It can't be like a normal stick things together. It's got to be a plastic welding cement. So it's Tamiya Extra Thin with lots and lots and lots of tiny, tiny, tiny little bits of plastic card. However, if you want to, you can also use normal bits of off-cut sprue, you know, the, the frame that your parts come on. Uh, basically, all you do is you dump a load of tiny pieces of polystyrene into your Tamiya Extra Thin. Um, and whether it's, say, bits of sprue or bits of plastic card, as long as it's polystyrene, this glue works by melting and liquidizing polystyrene. So when you get two pieces, you put the glue on either side, uh, or you put the glue in the gap or how you want to do it, and it melts the plastic so the, the says two pieces of plastic, it melts the plastic, the two pieces melt into each other, and when it all dries, you've got two pieces of plastic locked together because they're just one piece of plastic. So when you dump a load of polystyrene in this, it just becomes liquid polystyrene in the glue, the glue in suspension. The glue is the carrier fluid. When you then making a model, let me uh, find a bit of plastic. I haven't got a bit of plastic to use, but uh, let's just do a little back of this. When you're making a model, if you can get the lid off, oh, hello. Uh, what you do is if you've got a seam or a gap in your model that you want to fill, and it's not a major gap, so you don't really want to get the filler out, all you do is quite simply, you just blob on some sprue goo. Let's say there's a little gap there, like a little seam line between two halves. You blob that on. You give it 12 to 24 hours to dry, to fully cure. I'll just get some of that crap off because it's got a lot of crud in this in the lid. You give it about 12-24 hours to fully cure 
And what will basically happen is that I would find some tissue. What will basically happen is it goes solid. And then when it's fully cured, you simply go in and sand away. Uh, and sand it away and you can use sanding sticks or files. It has certain advantages over fillers. Uh, and the reason that I like to use Spruder instead of fillers a lot of times. It's slow to dry, it does take up 24 hours. However, once it has dried, the advantage is, the way it works is, as the glue evaporates away, it leaves the polystyrene behind. Remember, the polystyrene is liquid and it's in the glue suspension. The glue evaporates off and flashes away and it leaves polystyrene. So your gap is now filled with just polystyrene. And it will, of course, liquidize the plastic of the model around it. So it'll all lock together. Once it's dried, it's just polystyrene. So you can sand it. You can um, redo scribing for panel lines. You can drill it. No problem. Some fillers are drillable and sandable and scribable and some aren't. And some expand and shrink. You're just filling a gap with polystyrene. Now as to the golden ratio, how to make it, there is no magic ratio. It depends how much you've got in the pot. Quite simply, you need to make sure that when you get that when you've when you pull it out like that, it doesn't drip. Or if it does drip, it drips very slowly. That's all you need to remember. Just put put like a put a load in, shake it around, give it five minutes, open it up, pull the brush out. Does it drip off the brush quite easily? Then you've not got enough. Put more in give it another five minutes keep adding polystyrene until you can pull the brush out and it just kind of hangs there in a blob because if it's too thin it'll just run into gaps and disappear you want to be able to put it over a gap and it'll sit on top of a gap like a bead of glue and that's the idea it covers up a gap and you can sand it back so just simply put a load in until it's thick enough to not just drip off the brush it needs to be gloopy and thick and stodgy but it's uh, the only word of caution i would say is when you're doing that take the lid off Put your little bits of plastic in, put the lid back on. Don't just leave the lid off for five or ten minutes because you will then give yourself headaches because it really does get to you after a while. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, sprue glue, it's a, it's a really cool way of doing filling gaps. And it's a lot less hassle sometimes than just fillers. Now, before we get going, I've of course got my enormous cup of coffee, which is legal requirement. Uh, so, quick look at chat. That's your remote control standing fan, so it's pretty good, says Blanco Blanco. Oh, trust me, I've got, I had a fan in the summer here, and it was absolutely divine. But I knew as soon as I turned it off and went to bed, I'd just get hot again. Uh, Dad says, either sprue or styrene pieces will do, guys. Yeah, all it needs to be is polystyrene. If you're making a kit and you want to make some sprue glue at that point, you can just... Take bits of the sprue that you're not going to use, that you're just going to throw away, and chop them up. And the beauty of that is if you make sprue glue out of the same sprue as the kit, you're filling gaps on the kit with the plastic from the kit, effectively, with the same plastic. So just make sure it's polystyrene. If it's a gumpler, then make sure on the instructions where it lists all the sprues uh, that it says PS, polystyrene. If it says ABS, you can't use ABS. To me, cement, that cement doesn't work on ABS. It won't liquidise it. That's the trick. You want the glue to liquidize the polystyrene uh but guys vickers har i are be late merry new sunday year fox dad aviad loth and anyone i've been missing this massage well that all went a bit wrong didn't it Arr. <laughs> welcome back guys uh yes welcome welcome uh, happy new year and all that uh, oh, i've got pirate talk in my head now do, do, do. you only missed the 45 minutes of me waffling so i wouldn't worry too much Hello, uh, here but not here, posting Facebook lol says totally scale models. Welcome, dude. I didn't even know you could do a thing like sprue glue. That's a new thing for me, says DJW Kelly. Yeah, it's been around for a long time. It's just one of those things that as soon as glues like Tamir Extra Thin that are welding cements came out, people realised that you could just dissolve the polystyrene in them. And it's just, you know, it's not exactly the cheapest because you've got to buy, you know, a pot of Tamir Extra Thin and sacrifice it to make sprue glue. But... You know, I used to use milliput, and that's getting bits of putty and mixing them together and doing all this and then putting it on. And then you, and you might not get the ratio right, in which case it might never dry or it might go all crumbly. And there's different different fillers are different, differently usable. Some fillers, you just can't sand them at all or you try and scribe it and it goes all powdery. Just use sprue goo. Tyrone Key says, hey, Fox, I will build the wife and the mortal one as that and one is more useful as it does not need line of sight to shoot at a unit. So this means it can hide behind buildings and stay safe. I like that. 
Gaz Vickers asks, what are we building? We are building the uh, Hydra or Wyvern. I think, I think they're exactly the same apart from the guns, which I don't have to stick on. Uh, although, to, to answer Tyrone's point, I would be tempted more to go for the Wyvern, to be honest, just by default. Um, but if I don't glue the guns on, if I put them on, they're just going to get a like that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to do magnets because that's far too complicated. Not complicated, but I just can't be bothered doing the magnets. This is just for me to play on the tabletop, not display quality models. So we'll see. We'll see. If they don't really stay in place, I'll just glue some on and decide. But yes, I probably would go for the Wyvern, to be honest. Eventually, I'll probably get two and they'll have one of each. That's my idea. Uh, right, so let's crack on. Uh, where is step one? Because it's pretty much it's all the same, I think. Step one to seven for the Hydra. And then step eight to ten. Yeah, so the only difference between the two is it literally is the different weapon. There's no difference in the in the hole. I've not even seen that. Either. There's no difference in the hole or the superstructure or anything like that. So I can build either at this stage. Now, what this does mean is it's going to be another couple of hours of me making tracks. <laughs> hey, we've done this before. After one now, they're going to get the tracks all messed up like on the last one I did, which made me all grumpy. Probably. So what have we got? Uh, I need uh, part number, no number, and no... Oh, they're doing it again. I'm going to mess this up now, aren't I, like I did last time. Right, where's my, where's my helmet of seeing? So, they're not going to tell me which one I want. So, I'm going to guess I want. I'm going to use my brain now. So, left track assembly is... Is... Do, 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 is that one. Ha, <laughs> ha, and... So, I'll get that one off. Let's get it off. Because if you remember, when I did the tracks on my Chimera, they put the two different ones on the same bit, and it was really annoying. Like I've got a front piece and a back piece, but on the on the Chimera, it was like this bit and that bit. You would sensibly assume that's one side and that's the other. No, it was like that bit and that bit and that bit and that bit. So we're not going to do that this time. So, uh, that's that. It has to have this piece attached to it, thusly, and it's not that one. They've done it again. They've done it again. I just, oh, I can't believe it. It's not that one. It is, in fact, that one. Oh, Games Workshop, 10 years ago. Oh, Middle class suburban non numbered sprue nonsense. I don't know why. Why? Why did you do that? If you're not going to number them, why not just put that one and that one? I'm going to put that there. It would fit. It would actually fit. I just, oh. oh, just make sure, just for my own. My own special knowledge. Have I, uh, actually, oh, could be wrong, actually. Uh, or could I be right? I could be wrong. I could be right. That looks correct. There we go. Yes, so they did it again. They did do it again. I think that's the same sprue as the Chimera. Um, yeah, look at it now. It's exactly the same sprue. Uh, actually... Oh yes, I thought the side panel was different. It is exactly the same. Yeah, I think all these vehicles are kind of the same template. The Chimera is basically the same. If you look at this and the Chimera and there's the one, there's another one. There's a few of them that have exactly the same base bit. The only difference here is I don't have this bit on the back. On on the uh, on this Wyvern slash Hydra. I still don't get how people can stand those individual track tank track kits with the bazillion pieces for the most boring parts of the tank. I like the drain games workshop or the rubber one, says Aviad. Anything else goes in the bin. Yes, Aviad's talking about 
if you don't do proper model making, I'm going to sneeze in a minute, any minute now, hang on. <laughs> wow. Because I'm tight. Sorry about that. There's no time to turn the microphone off. Um, yeah, he's talking about um, proper grown-up armor kits, tank kits, where they have, um, you know, like most, like, Tamir kits have rubber tracks, a single rubber track, or this kind of thing where they have a few pieces of track. Proper armor kits have, like, individual track links but not just one piece per link they might have two or three pieces for each individual link on the track so you've got to make each link there might be 90 or 100 of them and then put all the links together and make the track i that would just drive me insane insane that would kill me i couldn't do that uh, i need a little glass pot hang on i couldn't do that i really couldn't do that so we need here we are again. I've, I've forgotten how we did this last time now, so I've got to count again. So we need uh, one, two, three, four, five, six oneers. If you watch the last live stream, this is exactly the same. This is exactly the same. You get flashbacks now. This is exactly what you watched, what you watched last time. So we need six of these little puppies to three. So anyway, I hope you all had a jolly good Christmas and jolly good New Year's and that. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Let's do two more. Uh, I'm going to move these out of the way because they're getting in the way of the sprues and annoying me. I had a jolly nice and quiet and peaceful Christmas and New Year. Uh, I made myself a little bit fat, which is a bit of a sad thing. So I'm currently trying to get rid of that. Be purely because I did nothing in uh, all the food in the world. It's the downside of the Christmas and the New Year's. Oops. Six of those. I've got six oneers. Uh, we need one, two, two tours. Two two. Two tours. Yes, we had a jolly good Christmas. It was very pleasant. Good New Year. Uh, I had a moment of deepest of joy and then the deepest of disappointment uh, over New Year. When I realised, I had the moment of deepest, deepest joy when I saw to my delight that the Christmas lectures were being hosted by Dr. Alice Roberts, who I'm utterly in love with. I want to marry Dr. Alice Roberts because she's awesome. Uh, and I was like, oh, wow, she's doing... Oh, I'll watch anything. That I, Dr. Alice Roberts could just have half an hour of her walking to the shops and back. And I would sit and watch it transfixed. I'm utterly in love with Alice Roberts, Dr. Alice Roberts. And I was like, wow, this is brilliant. I can't... Oh, no, nah, because last year's Christmas lectures, right, they were rubbish. The guy was annoying. I need a one... One, two, three, four. One, two, three... Two, four is... Uh, last year's were rubbish. If, you, if you're outside the UK, the Christmas lectures are basically a British tradition. Um, every New Year, it's the Royal Institute of uh, the Royal Institute, which is the world leading scientific institute. Every year, or at New Year, they host a series of lectures over a three or four day period, aimed at children, and they can be about anything. They've been about you know various scientific subjects, they could be robotics, uh, meteorology. Carl Sagan hosted one of them once. He did some on the solar system. They've been going for like 30 or 40 years, the Christmas lectures, the Royal Institution Christmas lectures. Uh, and they're usually very good. But the last few years, they've been real kind of a little bit. Um, what do I need now? Two of the biggies. They've been a little bit too dumbed down, a little bit too child friendly. Whereas they used to be, you know, watchable by adults and kids. The last few years, they've been a, a bit too like children's TV bit too poppy bit and it's like yeah i not really watch those um however when i saw it with dr alice roberts i was like oh heaven heaven is alive and heaven is real i'm living in it i can sit and watch dr alice roberts talk to me about i don't care what she's talking to me about i really don't give a crap i could just sit and watch alice roberts do charming things for an hour three or four hours uh and started off well she comes on we're going to talk about, you know, evolution and stuff. I'm like, yeah, brilliant. Nice one. This is going to be great fun. 
and then her co-host appears and it's some Irish woman who just I don't know why she just I just found her completely annoying I just couldn't stand her at all I was like oh I don't like you I don't know why it's nothing nothing personal against her it's just she just grated on me I don't know why she was trying like like an adult who tries too hard to be hit with the kids and just fails miserably it just didn't work for me so she just got on my nerves instantly and I'm like look stop taking time away from my beloved Dr Alice Roberts Stop, stop taking her away from me so I can't see her on the telly and go away but she kept coming back and I'm like ah oh, I can't watch it now so I had to give it watching in the end because I couldn't I couldn't stand this woman that she was co-hosting with it was like, oh no so I had to miss out on three or four hours of my my beloved Dr Alice Roberts if you don't know who Dr Alice Roberts is you're missing out if you're in the if you're in the UK you need to go to iPlayer and look up uh, anything on the science or the history side she's a she's a anthropologist and um, she's just divine she's been she's been around for a long time uh, but yeah she tends to she's an anthrop she's a forensic anthropologist well she's not she's a she's an archaeologist and anthropologist so she does a lot but she does a lot of science stuff as well and it's strange the stuff she gets chosen to host but I, i'll do anything for alice roberts i really would Like my dad used to have a thing for uh, Kirsty Falk on Newsnight. With me, it's Dr. Alice Roberts on the science on the science programs. Oh, Dr. Alice Roberts. But yeah, this is the woman that's hosting her. I'm sure she's a really nice. But she seemed to insist on wearing pajamas for some reason, which was kind of annoying. And she was just kind of really annoying. You know, like a try-hard adult when they're just trying too much to appeal to younger audience hey kids let's all be cool and just, no let's not and she was wearing some god awful pajama outfit which just looked horrible i couldn't stand looking at that so i was sad there was sadness i missed out on uh, dr alice roberts but then there was a there is a, a repeat of a series on bbc i play with her and Do and uh, neil oliver talking about the celts so i like neil oliver so i, I made up for it by watching her on that instead. If I was somehow to find out that Dr. Alice Roberts was into Warhammer, my God, the world would be just the best place ever. My world would be complete. She won't be into Warhammer. <laughs> yeah, no. Where's my brushy brush? Uh, let's have a look and see what chat's doing. Uh, Fox, the kit is not even 10 years old, which makes it worse. And the other one you were thinking of was the Lehman Russ, says Tara. Yes. I don't know how um, don't know how long ago it was that they started actually properly numbering the kits. I know it was, all the big changes came around in about 2011, 2012, when management changed and they decided to actually acknowledge the fact that they were a model making company uh, it does seem to be from around about that time that things started getting better uh, free all tracks love and hate them in tandem says gas because yeah free all make the metal tracks when i was saying earlier on about like you know tanks where you have to make the tracks some of them have metal tracks, which I suppose isn't so bad because you've just got to get the parts and assemble the track. I could probably live with that, like for all tracks. But the kind of kit where you just get plastic tracks, so they all come on a sprue and you've got to get all the pieces off and clean them up and stick them on the track. Oh no. And then make the track. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be giving that back. And in fact, I will be. Because some of you may know, because I'm sponsored by emodels.co.uk. Your one-stop shop for your model making needs. Um, I was going to build a Panzer IV for them. Uh, a Meng Panzer... Is it a Meng? RMF. Uh, it wasn't a Panzer IV. It was a Panzer Alf G. Panzer Alf G. I was going to make as my next E-Models build. And that had individual track link plastic tracks. And I, I got it home and started having existential dread about that. And then uh, Bandai made the perfect grade millennium falcon available in the uk 
and I said to Pete Matey Models, I'd like to build that Falcon for you. And he said, absolutely. And I said, brilliant, have this tank back. I don't want to make that now. So I dodged a bullet on that one. I've still got it here. I need to send it back or take it back with me. So yeah, I nearly, nearly end up doing that. Thankfully, I won't be. Because I'm not a big armour builder. He says building armour. This is Warhammer armour. It's different. Uh, so question for you all. Should I work on my Master Grade Sandrock, my Master Grade Zaku 2, or should I get back to work on my full armour unicorn, says Nim Sindarin. Uh, Zaku 2. Sandrock's a bit small. Unicorn will... Um, your full arm unicorn will make you just want to die. Lose the will to live. But you can never go wrong with a Zaku. Everybody likes a nice Zaku. Mm -hmm. James Lorimer is in. Welcome, dude. Uh, Dad's saying he started his huge submarine. Yes. Dad has got... Uh, if you watch my good, very good friend Ted, Skipper Ted's, uh, his, his channel, he's been doing the big Trumpeter 148 scale 7C U-boat for E-models. This thing's a beast. It's like four feet long. It's massive. He's been building that for about two years now, on and off. Uh, but Dad's got himself a kit as well. And he's actually vowed to... He's made a start on it now. He's got the same kit. I look forward to seeing that. Just take your time with it, Dad. Don't be rushing it. Enjoy it. Uh, do, do, do. Space Tamter says, uh, Bratwurst, taters and sauerkraut here. 66% the Germans. <gasps> that all just sounds really good. I love sauerkraut. I think I've told you before, my, my secret recipe for making nice hot dogs is to use Polish hot dog sausages from Tesco's and sauerkraut. Oh, delish. And some dried, uh, ready-to-eat kosher onions that you can sprinkle on top to give it the crunchies. Yeah, it's a nice combination, all that. Dr. Alice Roberts with Jar Jar Binks special. Oh, you just you've ruined it now. Jamie, you've taken perfection and, and just taken a big poop on it. Thanks to Michael Faraday, isn't that right? Says Nim Sindarin. Um, yes, the Christmas lectures. They're known as the Christmas lectures, but they are, in fact, the Royal Institution Christmas lectures. I think Faraday was the first one to start those. Michael Faraday, back in 18 such and such. They have been going for, you know, over 100 years. For many, many years. It's like, and they are kind of a, a UK institution of themselves. Ask anyone about the Christmas lectures. It was one of those things that when you were a kid in the 70s and 80s, you used to watch. Even if you had no interest in science, you still kind of watched them. And like, you know, one year... So in the olden days, they were, like I said, they were great. They were kind of interesting and watchable. Because it was like, you know, you had Carl Sagan on talking about the solar system. Uh, one year they had the Christmas lecture was about robots and robotics. This was in the 80s. So they had like R2-D2 and C-3PO turn up. And they actually, you know, Anthony Daniels and What's-His-Face in the in the outfits on stage. And when you're, you know, 10 or 11 year old, 6 or 7 year old kid or whatever I was, it was brilliant. I was like, wow, brilliant, fantastic. So, but now they're just like, it's, it's like watching bad children's TV. It's just too... It's too, I don't know, too poppy, too bite size, too simplified. So you can't really watch them now. But yeah, they've been around for a very long time. It's kind of a British tradition now. It used to be that, I, you know, when you used to watch them in the old days when I was a kid. I'd actually be watching them for what they were about. Not necessarily that I was interested in the person doing the presentation, because often the night it was just a scientist, a and other scientist. But nowadays, uh, if I do watch them, it tends to be watch them because I like the presenter rather than I like the subject. So, you know, obviously Dr. Alice Roberts, because I'm in love with her and I want to marry her and have all the babies. Uh, they had um, Brian Cox did it one year. And I can't remember. I think his was all about time and space i think 
It was obviously about space. But I can't remember specifically what he was talking about. He's done one, the one with Sagan. So now it's more a case of I'll look at who's presenting it and see. Yeah, I'll see what it's about. But even if it's something I'm not interested in specifically, if it's a presenter that I recognize that I actually quite like, I'll watch it. Like it could be a it could be a lectures on statistics, which you think would be the most boring thing ever. But there are a couple of presenters that the BBC have that have done some documentaries on statistics that have actually been kind of interesting. Let's see what uh, chat's doing. C C say tax and Scott appears. C say tax. What? I don't know what that means. The Meng Macava four tracks are a nightmare, says Scott Sutherland. Oh, oh, he says C, say tracks, and Scott appears. Yes. Yes, yeah, Scott likes his Macavas. There's a thing for Macava tanks. Uh, Zaku for the win, says Roadkill Raker. Uh, speaking of, I need to finish snapping up the real grave Charles Zaku while listening to this, says Roadkill Raker. Cool, do it. Uh, EC Idaho says, I too am scared of individual track links. I'm not scared of doing them. I just know that I have such a low boredom threshold that I would just get so bored. <gasps> so bored. It's like, you know, when I was building the Fine Moles Millennium Falcon a few times, I've done that a few times, and it's like, the build on that, it doesn't take forever, but it does take long enough, and I got bored halfway through, because for me, and I've said this before, the thing about me is I don't really care for the building part of model making. I'm a model maker, but I don't really have any interest or great interest in the actual buildy buildy part. Because I'm just sticking stuff together. I'm just getting it off the sprue, I'm farting about with like I'm here, cleaning it up. Apologies if my head keeps coming in shot by the way. I'm just taking things off the sprue and I'm sticking them together. On the rare occasion when I do any kind of like modding or custom buildy stuff, you know, that's a bit more interesting. But for the most part, it's just sticking things together. And that doesn't interest me in the slightest. So anything that just makes that whole building print, and even, even, you know, Gumpler, even Bandai kits, even though it's snap fit, I still get horribly bored by the building process because it's the building process which carries no interest for me at all. What I love is the painting and the weathering, the creative part of it. For me, that's the creative part of the process. There's, there's, there's different types of model makers. And it'd be interesting. There you go. Here's the thing for you in chat. Which one of these do you think you are? And I'll see if I can remember all of them. There's a few different sort of categories of model makers. First off, you've got the builders. Now, don't, I don't answer till I've gone through all the options because, you know, you don't know what the other ones are. Um, first off, there's the builders. These are the people that just like to make stuff. And a lot of these people will be the kind of people that do a lot more stuff outside of model making. You know, your Adam Savage is where they tend to do a lot of building and creating other things. So they may have also have interests in things like, you know, um, ceramics or uh, making other objects that are model kit, more creative things, a sculpting or, you know, scratch building. So, yeah, there, so those are the builders, the people that just like, they just like the process of creating and making. And I can't, I can't blame them for that at all, because I go through moments where I quite like that process, but for the most part, I don't enjoy it. Um, then you have the people who are just really the painters. You know, they, they kind of enjoy the build process. They don't mind it. It's a, it's, a, it's a necessary evil, but they're really in it for the painting and the weathering. And that's what I'm in it for. I'm a paint. I see myself identify as a painter. I like the painting. I like the weathering. I like that side. That's where the creativity for me is. I'm not saying that, you know, scratch building isn't great. I'm saying for me personally, I'm not very good at the building side. It, it doesn't interest me and I get bored, but the painting, that's where I, my interest lies. That, that's where I can be creative. So I'm a painter. Uh, and then kind of as an offshoot of the buildy type, there's this, there's the complete scratch builder, really, who is the kind of person who just does not make kits at all. They just scratch build everything. And there are builders like that. They have no interest in a pre 
manufactured kit. They might use bits from kits, but they would really rather just make something up. You know, just go in and make something up, scratch. So I want to make a spaceship. I'll get all these bits and I'll make it myself. Uh, and I just call them the scratch builders. It's kind of an offshoot of the buildy buildy type. So which which one of those would you say you saw yourself as? You see yourself as a builder or a painter or both. You can you can enjoy all the parts of it, of course. Or are you an absolute scratch builder? I guess if you're watching a Warhammer stream, you're probably not going to be an absolute scratch builder because you need to be able to make Warhammer. Uh, Gaz Vickers is currently building an Edward Typhoon Raid Room 148. The first 40 minutes was building the photo etched seat, much bending. Surprisingly relaxing for the most part. I wonder if he's going to list the buyers, says Gross Models. I don't know what that's about. Uh, painter and Wargamer with a good part fluff bunny, says Aviad Madar. Uh, Jay Sido has a 135th UE tank et made by Mirage with link and length tracks. The single links are a nightmare. Uh, Gazvika says buying model kits is a separate hobby, though, isn't it? Uh, gross models. Well, the wife thinks it is with me having 70 kits at the moment. Yeah, it, well, I'd say buying model kits is a separate addiction to actually making model kits. <laughs> Yeah. A builder says dad. Dad's a builder. Nim says he thinks he's both. Uh, I'm an all rounder, says Pascal Leaverse. You're an early bird as well. Space Hamster ZH. Welcome, Space Hamster ZH. I'm mostly a painter, but part of what has drawn me away from illustration and to model making lately is that I'm making three dimensional objects. There's that too. Yeah. It's just, I mean, I, I, I'm an arty type as well. I've been since I was a kid, drawn. And uh, I view model making when I'm painting really as just a three dimensional version of what I would draw. So, you know, when I was trying to figure out how to paint things, <gasps> stability. Oh, but it didn't break the skin. Well, it did a little bit. It's not going to bleed. It's not it's the stability, but it's just broken the skin a little bit. There's no actual stability. So you can go home disappointed. Yeah, when I'm trying to figure out how to paint something, like for example, um, when I want to paint, say, leather belt or some leather strapping on a character i don't pay any attention to what other people say to do i just i just remember how i would used to do leather strapping or a leather belt when i used to do two-dimensional art because i used to when i was a lot younger i used to draw i was always kind of a cartoony artist but i used to use pencil crayons i'd do like pen and ink so i'd do pencil outlines then ink it all in either with with a, a mapping pen or with a, a proper nib ink nib or just even brushed it in with inks proper artist inks and then i would before i figured out how to color a pen and ink drawings with watercolors like you do in a, a, a comic book i used to use uh, pencil crayons so I would, I would literally sit there and think how do i paint this i've got this figure and he's got like a brown a brown ammo belt i wanted to like brown leather how do i paint that well how would i do that in pencil crayons well i'd do this this and this okay we'll try that in model paints done there you go i don't know where i'm going with that you can basically have crossover between two and three dimensional art is what i'm trying to say this is a slow process now chris you see why i went into the e-models live stream with my tank pre-built because it's been i've been building now for about half an hour and i've not even got the first bit glued together yet see if i come in with just the stuff in the box if you didn't watch it we did a, a any e models live stream where all three of us built a little meng toon tank i started the stream with it pre-assembled into like the cupola or the turret and the hull uh, and the other two guys, Ted and Chris, started off with just the box of bits and started building straight away. But you see why I couldn't do that? Because I'm too damn slow. I sit here for like half an hour just taking out all the... I'll be quick if I just do it with the file, to be honest. Taking out all the little nibs and nubs and bits. Seam lines. I can't I can't run through building fast at all. So they're, all they're all joking, saying I was cheap because I started off. And, you know, they finished their tanks before I did. But I was I was taking my time with the painting, bra.
So I wasn't cheating, I was just being practical. I knew that if I started building, I would just barely have finished building it by the end of the show. And I can prove that because this will be an hour shorter show and there's probably less parts on this kit and I want to finish building it by the end of it. So there was no cheating. Uh, what are people saying? I guess I fall into... Oh, uh, Matt Bradford says he's an all-rounder as well. Uh, J.S. Hyder says, I guess I'm to fall into the build part of it, mainly because my painting ability is not all good. Just takes practice, dude. Just takes time. Beyond Hope. Welcome, Beyond Hope. Happy belated New Year. And to you. I just like building. Got back into models to relieve stress. as Os Osric 9000. Uh, me and Ted finished. Just saying, says Gross Models. Yeah, I finished. I finished the tank. I just hadn't done the figure, that's all. I finished my tank the same way you did. I finished a little after you guys. And let me, let me, this is going back to the Christmas live stream. Let me also point out uh, that while these guys spent half, you know, an hour and a half building the tank, uh, and I, I didn't, and they finished before me, I brush painted everything. I didn't, they, they looked out, they just like washed out and got an airbrush and went, I'm going to paint it green now. Psst, done. I didn't. I brush painted it. I'm like, I'm going to paint it blue now. And it took me ages because I was going slowly. There you go, you see. Aww. It may have taken me a little longer to finish my tank. But I did a lot more work. <laughs> there you go. I win. I rock, you don't. <coughs> right, let's get some gluing going on. Uh, how are we going to do this now? Let's have a look. So that needs to go on there. Let's go on there. If you well, I'll start that whole sentence again. If you watch the last one of these, you know how all these work. But basically, you put these two sides together, and the track goes around the edge. Beautiful way of doing it. Dead simple. Not complicated at all. Uh, some people don't like to put the tracks on straight away, but I do because I just can't be asked farting about with bits of tracks sitting everywhere. So I'd rather just get it all in. And get the tracks on there. At the end of the day, it's going to be weathered and mucky and dirty, so it doesn't really matter that much. If there's a few scrabbly lines where the tracks meet the hole or the track guards, because it doesn't actually matter. Uh, where's that brush gone? Do do do. Go on there. So I'm going to dry fit a big track on the top. Make sure that fits. Then we want one, two, one. One. Two. Ping. Arse. I'm so old. I remember when I had a mobile phone that was on the one-to-one -one network. Who remembers one-to-one? It's a mobile network before it became T-Mobile. Hell, I used to have a phone on the Mercury network. It's going back a long way. Who remembers that? Mercury Mobile. Okay, so that's that one there. I shall attach the big boy here. Let's get the big boy on there. So yes, yeah, so I did finish a little later than Chris and Ted, granted. I did start with it pre-assembled into the two distinct and primed. But again, it's because I knew I wasn't able to do the airbrushing. And I didn't want to do the airbrushing. And the brush painting did take a bit longer. Because where they could get their entire base colour on there in like, you know, one to five minutes, bang, there you go, it's green. What? I took my time. And I did do, you know, it was already pre-primed, but I did do a base colour. And then a dry brush of a highlight colour. Well, a base colour and then a wash. And then, um, you know, the base colour over again. And then a highlight colour. So I, I put my effort in. Uh, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, on that. 
did a lot of dry brushing to get me lights and darks to get a bit of shading going on so I wasn't sitting on my arse you know that's not right no oh, you spoon tis the wrong end tis the wrong end yes I made a mess of that made a mess of it all I went the wrong way around I did it wrong mum right should we try that again <laughs> can't get it out now it's all gone a little bit wrong we'll try that again shall we so that goes there one two one there we go apologies if my head keeps coming in shot i'm an idiot i can't help it one two there we go that's better one two one there we go much better and yes I did add a figure to my little tank but I did that afterwards because that was a that was a good two hours worth of painting on its own just to paint the figure so yeah I knew I would get that done on the live stream it was all good fun uh, is it a DIY harmonica <laughs> looks like it doesn't it uh, let's have a look I don't remember an, a no airbrush rule, says Chris at Grace Models. There was no, there was no rule about no airbrush. I just, I can't, I can't really film. I can't do anything with the airbrush while I'm working because you wouldn't hear anything. It'd be utterly annoying, and my spray booth is in the wrong place for live streaming. So I didn't really have a choice of doing an airbrush. That goes on there, like there to see. There we go. Little bit of glue. Uh, Beyond hope, Avia. Uh, not some, uh, I want to display boats on the sea, but every attempt at water is like a full tsunami. <laughs> Says Beyond hope. Going to grab lunch. The miss is really quick. Tell me what I miss when I get back. Says James Larimore. Okay. We shall. Mm -hmm. I need a right. So I've got one, two, one, one, two, one. I need a chunky one. Little wee fella goes there like that. Oh, hello, like that. You see? Now you wouldn't think I'd just done one of these a couple of weeks ago, and yet I'm trying to remind myself how the hell to do it. Yeah, when I've built like twenty different armored vehicles for a Warhammer army, then I'll be able to do this without thinking about it. But for the moment. I'll keep an eye on the instructions, thank you very much. Number one to wanna. Do, 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 do. Yeah, some people like to keep the tracks off or separate when they do this so they can paint them without making a mess. I don't mind. I'll get all the bodywork of the tank painted and dry brushed. These will be covered in bits of random paint and then I'll go and paint the tracks. Because obviously if I'm dry brushing the, the whole of the tank, I don't want to get paint on the tracks if they're painted. So it might be like one of the last things I paint uh, will be the tracks. Uh, one and then a four and then a one. Ein Tracken gefahren. I'll probably put on far too much glue, I think. I think I tend to overdo the glue. But hey, no harm. At least no, it's not going to fall apart. Yay. Oops. Then a one. Oops, dropping, dropping, dropping. Little one there. And then that one. Like a glove. I shall have a look at the chat in a moment. Can't talk. Gluing. Mm 
There we go. One. Ah, uh, uh, in all that time. So what we've been doing now, about an hour, about 45 minutes, I built one track unit. And you guys wanted me to make an entire tank in a four hour live stream. Yeah, that wasn't going to happen, was it? There we go. Right, let's have a quick look at the chat. Uh, William Rayborn. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, William. Uh, Making models. Afternoon, folks. Welcome, Carl. How you doing, dude? Uh, put my tweezers away. I've had Madar say, uh, Fox, if you're going to get good at these, you need to try to me as 135th World War Tank, World War One Tank, something but bigger, says Beyond Hope. Yeah, they do kind of look like World War One Tanks. I like that kind of look. Or just get a Bane Blade, says Aviad Madar. Here's the thing about Bane Blades, right? Here's an enormous coffee. About a week ago, I got an email from Patreon. By the way, if you want to help support this channel, you can do. Go to patreon.com forward slash model making guru. Uh, and you can help keep the lights on on this channel. You can help support this channel. And there are various rewards to being a patron. Nice little segue. Yeah, I got a mail from Patreon saying, hey, would you like to do a little survey? You're going to a draw for a prize. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I don't mind little surveys. I've got a Patreon account. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. So I uh, did the little survey. It's just a generic survey. They do it every now and then. Uh, just feedback really it's filled it out and then a couple of days ago i got a thing saying hey well done you'll be one of five people chosen to win and some aviad some aviad no not to win aviad you've won some amazon an amazon gift voucher for a hundred dollars i'm like it's 80 quid i'm like oh brilliant thank you very much so i put it on amazon and i was looking at what i could get and i thought you know i should get some warhammer stuff i may as well spend it on kits and stuff so i thought you know what 80 quid voucher, 80 quid freebie basically. I could get myself a Bane Blade for five pounds because a Bane Blade is 85 quid. And I've got a voucher for, cashed in voucher for 80 quid. That could be most excellent. So I went onto, onto Amazon. And there's quite a lot of Warhammer stuff on Amazon, apart from Bane Blades, which are on Amazon. But they're like 300 quid. And I'm like, what? There seems to be, there's a whole load of like Warhammer stuff that on Amazon for some reason is like two or 300 quid. And it could be just like a pack of 10 dudes, 400 quid. I'm like, what? And I'm wondering, I don't know if it's just because they want to have the product on Amazon, but not actually sell it just to keep it available or something. I don't know. But like, why would, why is, why is it Bane Blade like 300 quid? It's like 85 quid kit. So in the end, I didn't get one. I was like, oh, I could have got a Bane Blade for it. So I've got my vouchers on there. There's nothing on there I want to actually buy at the minute. So, But it will go towards a nice Warhammer kits, I think. So I shall, I, shall, I shall leave it for now. Wait and see until I have a moment of Warhammer need. I need to pick up some kits. And put that towards it. I was like, 300? So I don't get that. I don't get why there are like some Warhammer kits on Amazon for hundreds of pounds. It's not like they're out of production. It's not like they're rare or anything like that. They're just like randomly a few hundred quid. There's like some of the uh, some of the start collecting sets. Well, not well, it's not start start collecting, but there's some little sets like that. Uh, I mean, Dark Vengeance. There was a Dark Vengeance on there for seven hundred quid, but I know that's that kit that doesn't exist anymore. It's no longer relevant. It was that was you know seventh edition, so. And that's probably just to keep it on there rather than they want to buy it. But it was like, you know, the Dark Imperium set, 400 quid. I'm like, what? Uh, what? It's 90 quid. What are you doing? So I don't quite get that. So I was most saddened anyway. And there's no way for me to cash the vouchers in and then transfer it to my bank so I can then just get the Bane Blade from Games Workshop. So I'm like, oh. So we'll wait and see. Somebody will have one at some point and then I'll, I'll get myself one. And I may as well use the vouchers I've already got. Uh, could it be a resin one? Didn't they start out like that from Forge World, says Gaz Vickers. Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I think it's just the normal bog standard plastic one. Because um, nobody's going to spend two or three hundred quid on a, on a Forge World resin Bane blade now when you can get it in plastic. Uh, 
I mean, it may well be. It may well be. Tyrone Key says, Fox, get the codexes you need. Yeah, I've I've still not played a game yet because, like I said uh, to a few people now, I have this habit. I don't know why I did that. I have this habit of, like, getting excited and building the models for the for the units that I don't actually have the codex for yet. So I built my... Uh, my... Um, Skitari Rangers haven't got the Ad the Admech Codex yet. Built my Imperial Knights. Yeah, not got an Imperial Knights Codex yet. Built some Space Marines. Nope, not got a Codex for them yet. Duh. So that's why I've, I've started on my Torox. Because I have got a Codex. I have got the... <laughs> Astra Militarum. Or Imperial Guard, if you prefer. I have got the Astra Militarum Codex. So once I get my Torox and my Scions done, I can play them. Yeah. Uh, Chris says Codexes or Codee, or Paul Timonep says Codices. I kind of think, as far as I know, Codices is the correct plural term for multiple codexes. But nobody says Codices, they just say Codexes. I don't know what the actual correct pronunciation is, but I would have said codices. I've also got the codex for the uh, Armour of the Imperium, which is the Forge World codex for my Death Court of Krieg. So technically what I need to do, although I've made the mistake that I'm starting this, but what I need to do is as soon as I've got a load of my Imperial Guard things I can play with, uh, you know, get this, get this built and built up. I've got my Tempesta Scions. I need to, and all I need to do on my Scions is paint the dudes now. So I need to get that done. Uh, and then what I can do is get my um, Death Cora Creed painted up, built and painted up, because I've got the Codex for them. Then I can start playing some games. Get to my local Warhammer store and start playing some games. Somebody did ask me actually, uh, I think today or yesterday, it was talking about my, I'm doing the, the Warhammer Conquest thing and they asked if I've played any of the games yet. It's like, no, nah, because there's no one I can just pop around to the house and play. None of my friends play Warhammer, would be interested in playing Warhammer. Uh, so the only place I can actually play is to just go to my local store. Now, there's a couple of guys in the Boom Hut that do actually go to my local store, so uh gray hall is one of them that i would probably end up playing because he's a he's a local lad so he goes there so i do need to actually get some shizzle done so i can go and have a game with gray at some point but yeah there's i've not i could technically have played some games with the uh the warhammer conquest because it comes all the gameplay rules and stuff however there's no way on god's earth that i'm going to my local warhammer store and putting down as a as a professional model maker, I use the word professional very, very loosely. As in, I get paid for doing it, but I'm not really professional. As a, as a model maker, I cannot put half-painted model on a table. I'm sorry, it's just not going to happen. If I play a game, I want those models to look fantastic. Or at least look painted. <laughs> no, no, no. Because my local manager jokes, he says, I don't care if your models are painted or not. And I'm saying, and I'm like, I do. In any way, I'm putting unpainted models on the table. Get off. It's not happening. Ah, Forge World. Let's not talk about that, says Paul at Team Inept. They sent you a free Magnus the Red. You can't knock them. No matter what they do now, you have to forgive them for all time because they sent you 100 quid with the kit. Or some price, whatever it costs. So they, can, they can do no wrong for you ever again now. Did you see the new Gene Stealers and the new Chaos Spesmery model from the Open Day thing yesterday? They look rather tasty. Uh, yeah, I like the um, I like the Gene Stealer. I like the look of the little ATV they've got. Um, they've got one painter on the on the painting team at, War, at, at GW. I don't know who it is, but my God, he's talented. Because you look at those look at those Gene Stealers, like the lady with all the art with the eyes. She got her eyes painted in. And it's like, 
You think, oh yeah, he's painted the eyes, and then you think, hang on, this figure is standard Warhammer size figure. Holy cow, how did you paint the eyes? I don't know how they do it. But there's one particular painter there who does really clean, bright paint jobs, and they're beautiful. And I wish I could paint. I can't do edge highlighting for the for, for Toffee, basically. But yeah, one of their one of their painting team has just got the most amazing style. Always looks nice and crisp. Their leather work looks brilliant, and their, their bright blues are always fantastic. Um, yeah, I quite liked it. The only thing that disappointed me was in the little animated. There was a little animated video on uh, Warhammer TV for the release of the Gene Stealer stuff, and on one of the pictures it showed some Gene Stealers hanging out of what looked like a four x four vehicle, like a kind of Humvee thing. I was like, oh, they're going to make a model of that? Because that looks mint. That looks like a Humvee in the Warhammer universe. And yet, when you see the releases, it's just uh, the ATV bikes. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that's not very interesting. I was looking. For, I, I would have been quite up for making a Humvee type thing. But no. No, they've got their truck thing and they've got the ATVs. And there you go, that's it. Uh... I like the look of the Chaos Space Marine. Did any of you see over the Christmas holidays or over the last few weeks the uh, Noise Marine? Oh, that looks fantastic. And again, that's by that, that particular artist in the heavy metal team, in the painting team that does most awesome work. It looks beautiful, but it also looks about a foot tall. But it's not. It's just the size of a Space Marine. How he paints like that, I do not know. So, yeah, the Noise Marine. Oh, with the glam rock hair and the glam rock electric guitar. and the, Oh, it looks fantastic. As a child of the 70s, I can fully appreciate the glam rock look. Um, where are we? Right, let's get these little puppies trimmed. And then we are good to go for the sticking. Time we are half four. I'll get this track assembled. And then we'll do some sticky sticker things, I think. Time flies by when you're the driver of a train, standing on the footplate there and back again. Not as good if I just slice them off. Do it on camera, dear. Uh, hey, Fox, does your Games Workshop allow you to use Forge Wheel stuff in store as my GW does not? Um, yeah, my local manager my local manager really doesn't give... He, he said, I don't give a shit what you put on. As long as it's something that's, you know, Games Workshop slash Forge World. He doesn't care what you put on the table. Um, just really... It, it, he's, he's more interested in the fact that you've come to his store to play the game. And that you're having fun than whether it's on the table and you know painted nicely or whether it's even something third party parts from Shapeway, he doesn't care. Or Anvil Forge or whoever you get you you got some third party bits and bobs. As long as it's not completely non games workshop. Like if I turned up with an army made of just figures from say Anvil or somewhere else, then he'd be a bit eh, okay, you're pushing it a bit. Because none of that is from Games Workshop or Forge World or Games Workshop at all. Then yeah, that's a bit that's a bit out of order. I wouldn't do that. That's just rude. You know, if I turned up to my local store with a load of stuff that hadn't even wasn't even stuff they sold or that the company as a company sold. So because yeah, otherwise you wouldn't be able to turn up with you know Death Core Creek. Which uh, I will be turning up with at some point. I will at some point pitch my Death Corps of Krieg against Grey Hall uh, Space Marines. I can't remember what else he's got. I know he's got some Space Marines. And they're white. And I can't remember if they're white skulls or who they are. Grey, if you're watching this, do tell me. I can't remember what you've got now. So I will pitch up my Death Corps at some point. Uh, I am going to be saving up to get... And I know this is this is this is not what I normally say because I hate resin, but I will probably save up to get a Death Core tank from Forge World. Maybe the Mac Machinarius pattern. I'm not sure which one it is. Some of the Death Core tanks that aren't just Lehman Russes, but the, the the kind of completely resin kits. They're also fairly new, which means the kit might not be a complete abortion. So I might save up and get myself a Death Core tank of some sort because they look massively mint. But I'm going to see how the, the figures I've got, the Death Call figures I've got, I'm going to see how they go. Because they're kind of old. 
they're about 10 years old now and they're not the best quality I didn't say print then, but they're not the best quality figures because they're a bit soft in the detail because they're an old, it's an old moulding now, so we'll see. Uh, I want the noise marine, but I never see it in stock. Hoping my local store can get me one if it comes in. Go on the website. I find it hard to believe a GW store manager with such a dingleberry as to deny forgeable units. They are, te there are, there are in some places, um, managers like that. Not, not many of them. But I think it's more likely you find them maybe outside the UK. Because I know in I know in the UK the managers I, I don't think every store manager is employed by games, but I think some of them are actually just franchise holders. I think I could be wrong. If anybody watching happens to be a manager of a games workshop store in the UK, he do tell me. <clears throat> My understanding is it's kind of a franchise thing, but you have a direct connection to Games Workshop. Or you might just be employed directly by them. Um Whereas I guess if you're overseas, it might not be such a direct connection. So <clears throat> they may want to more directly profit from, you know, selling the stuff that you're using on the table. But then again, you get a lot of stores, uh, you know, where they actually charge you to use their tables. Whereas if, if you go into a games workshop, you'd have to pay to use the tables. You sometimes have to book them in advance. You know, book a couple of hours of an evening because they'll have particular game nights and other days. Like my local one, I can't remember what days are which, but like, uh, you know, Monday will be, I don't know for sure, but one day will be like, the, the staff will train, will teach new people how to play. Another day will be like, just open table for everybody. Another day might be, you know, um, story gameplay. Another day might be a painting and building sort of session so you have to book them in advance and say you know book it for a couple of hours but it's free you don't have to pay there's more independent stores that charge you for things like that but yeah my, my local one's cool he doesn't care what you put on the table as long as it's games workshop or forge world and not completely third party like i could rock up and put a load of dudes on there that have got maybe imperial guard bodies but they've got some heads from anvil or some extra bits and bobs, or you know, stuff like that. He's not gonna be bothered about that. Because at the end of it, I've still got, you know, a basis of, it's just some custom parts. And not my current manager, but the manager before him, uh, who went to go and work at head office. He actually went, he actually went to head office for a match, for a tournament. And played a load of Space Marines who had Shapeways backpacks. I mean, I said, "How?" He said, "What happens if they notice?" He said, "Well, I'll get, I'll, I'll be, I won't be able to play. I'll be kicked off." He said, "But will they notice?" Nah, probably not. And I don't know if he won the match, but he didn't. They didn't spot. And that's 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 at you know headquarters in Nottingham. So that's fair enough, you know. But local stores, yeah, they don't care. I guess the difference between a Games Workshop store and a Warhammer store. Um, if I remember right, they're all Warhammer stores now. Or well, they should be. I think Games... Again, I could be wrong. I don't know that much. But my, my impression was that they're all, they've are all they all been rebranded as Warhammer stores. Because they don't tend to sell anything other than 40k and Sigma. I know some sell the Lord of the Rings stuff. My local doesn't. My understanding was from what the manager told me, they're all being rebranded as Warhammer now. Because Games Workshop is the old name. I don't know. Could be wrong. Uh, oh, Gross Models, do you have a show too? I'll tell everyone about it in case they don't know, says Gross Models. Yes, Chris at Gross Models has... Um, Totally stolen this idea from me. Totally jumped on my ta on my coattails. I don't mind. Uh, he has a show after my show at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Uh, eight p.m. of a Sunday is Chris over at Gross Models, who does his uh, Warhamster Live show, uh, where he <clears throat> works on his little Warhammer product projects. Uh, so do uh, go along and subscribe to his channel as well. 
And when you've had fun watching my show, which finishes about 6pm, go and have your dinner, go and have your tea, have a cup of coffee and watch a bit of telly. Uh, and then later on tonight, go and watch Chris's show. Chris, Chris doesn't run for like three hours like I do, and he doesn't talk twice as much. Um, it's only like an hour and a half or something. We just, at the moment, he's working on his tour rocks. Which, I have to say, Chris, I think you've, I think you've goofed with the gunner. Because the gunner, the thing that the gunner on the Torox, the thing that's in his hands, that's supposed to be attached to the gun. It's like the, the handle on the gun. I think you might have put the gun a bit too far forward. Don't really matter. I just noticed it the day. I'm like, oh wait a minute, that doesn't seem right. Right, time for more tracks. Then we'll do a little bit of chat and we'll do some stickery giveaways and that. <clears throat> so sticky sticky. Do, 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 do. I'd actually make inquiries at my local Warhammer store recently actually about doing um, doing some painting classes there running some painting classes just little beginner things you know how to apply paints and just real entry-level stuff so I must remind them of that might do that at some point maybe 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 I don't know right so this needs to go that way which is the biggie one. Do, 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 do. Big, even though that's too far forward. Now you've just seen me do this, and I'm still going to have to look at the instructions to do it. So biggie, and it's one to one. Yeah, one to one mobile. That's in the days when I had a Nokia fifty two ten or something. What network are you on? Orange? No, one to one. All right. Then again, I'm so old. I remember when the first mobile networks were like in London, and they were like Rabbit, and used to walk. You'd walk to a, you know, you'd see a shop, and it would have the Rabbit sticker in the shop window or on the door, so you knew you could use your mobile because that's where there was network. That was the uh, really early days of mobile phones. Really early days. And I think it was called Rabbit because that was a London thing for having a bit of a rabbit is having a bit of a chat with your mates. Chaz and Dave and all that. Do 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 one, two and one. Yes, I can't wait to get my Death Corps Creed painted up, just to see what they look like. I do love the look of them. I absolutely adore the look of them. It's like World War One German soldiers with French greatcoats. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, but I just, I want to, I don't know, I'm dubious about the quality. I did mail, because I got the figures, I've got ten little, it's uh, ten Death Corps Creed firing, I think. Uh, and they look really nice, but there are some soft details here and there. It's, it's all resin, so I mailed uh, Forge World and said, because the thing is about Forge World, they have a fantastic reputation. If you get something from them and it's a bit wrong or it's knackered or it's warped or you can't repair it, they'll just replace it without any question whatsoever. they just, yeah, we'll replace it, no problem. And I mailed them and said, hey guys, I've got the figures. They look really nice, but they're kind of a bit soft and there are some, some lumpy details here and there. They're a bit, you know, nothing's broken, but... Like some of the acrylic on the head are a bit pants, and they went. They're kind of ten years old now. That's that's what they come out like. But yeah. But the only frustrating thing with resin, with that is, that you know, if you know how they work, how that kind of thing works. GW have this thing where they have a number of molds based on the master. So you'll have the master, the original thing from which all the molds are taken and then you'll have like a, a master mold uh, and the master mold if i remember this right i might have it wrong if i remember right you get the original master which is the the, the model from which all the molds come from then you have something like a master mold which is taken from the original master and then from that 
you have a production mold which is taken from the mold of the master not taken from the actual master uh, so what you get is you have the master model you have the master mold which is only ever used once to make another mold and then that is locked away in the vaults and never seen again uh, and now I think okay you have the master model which uh, <clears throat> that's used to make the production mold and I think they do like one production run off it which is basically to make the model that you will then see on the box art and in Forge World if you go and look at the thing in the display cabinet the one that they build they give to the, the paint team to paint. That's like the <clears throat> the only one that ever comes off the production mold, off the master mold. And then the production mold is made from the master mold. Uh, and that mold is then used to create the models that you then buy. Uh, and which is why sometimes you can look at a model on the art on the you know the, the box art or in a display in an official display somewhere and the the master that they've built the one that the painting team has built and painted can look fantastic and then you get it and you get yours and it's like oh uh, there were some issues with some of the models that came out recently where um there were some fit issues that just weren't evident as ever being a problem on the original uh, painted by the painting team version <clears throat> and it's because uh, they had some parts that were manufactured um, and what they had to do they had to reproduce some of the parts was a problem with them so they reproduced them but they took some parts from one mold and some parts from another mold and there was a mismatch in the size and they didn't quite fit and it was like and that's because you have a, maybe one or two production molds perhaps more than one but never off the original master mold so I've always I'm dubious of that because you're never getting something as good as the original master. Well, I prefer plastic. Anyway. Um, Cy Reynolds. Oh, hi, Cy. Cy says, Fox, we're pleased to know there are three people from Canada in the Secret Santa thing. Yes, if uh, I meant to mention that. If you are, I don't know if it's closed now, I've forgotten. If you're not a member of the Boom Hut already, if you don't know what the Boom Hut is, do pop along to the Model Makers Boom Hut on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Model Boom Hut. Uh, I shall type that in the chat. Uh, it is Facebook. Uh, I've got a page TTP and stuff in there now, haven't I? Hang on. Uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Model Boom Hut. And I bet autocorrect messes that up. It's in chat there anyway. Um, and Cy Reynolds uh, started a secret Santa on there last month uh, where members can like just basically secretly put your name in and you'll get chosen somebody and you do something for them, get something for them. I don't know if it's closed now or anything, if it's still going, but do pop along. Uh, or give Cy a shout if you, if you want to find out more. Uh, but we have three Canadians, eh? Cool. It's technically closed, but if anyone really wants in from the stream tonight, I can squeeze them in. Oh, of course, Chaos Navana. Dope. Uh, Vincent at Mr. Loth has popped the link in. Thank you, Vincent. Didn't make an arse fit like I did. Also, Paul from Team Inept did it, but did it as ineptly as I did, so it wasn't a link. Hey! hey. Uh, um, let's have a look. Uh, <clears throat> Nobody talks as much as Fox, says Chris. True. Oh, come now, Fox, you're better than entry level. I'm sure you could teach at learn advanced techniques. Thank you very much. Oh, wait, wait, you meant teaching. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Uh, right, we'll do some uh, do some giveaway, stickery giveaways in a moment. Food, says Nim. Don't, I'm starving. I'm starving at the moment. But I'm trying to not eat too much because I need to get rid of the belly that I got over Christmas. Games Workshop and Warhammer stores are the same shop, different names in all Games Workshop stores are slowly being turned into Warhammer stores, says Tyrone Yes, that was my understanding. It's just a rebranding because they are, technically they only sell Warhammer. Apart from the Lord of the Rings stuff, which nobody talks about because it's all pants. Because um, nobody likes Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah, it's just Warhammer because that's all they sell. Warhammer 40k and Warhammer 
Age of Sigmar. Right, so let's get rid of this monsters on the desk. I've got some, I've got some bits. I'll just clean that off. And we should do some stickery, stickery giveaways. I'll see if I've had any emails come in. Remember, uh, I'm going to be doing some sticker giveaways now. So if you want to get a guaranteed sticker, you just need to send me an email. Where's it gone? Fox at modelmakingguru.com uh, and include your question and the answer that I can use to then give a sticker away. And make sure you include your name and address as well if you want a sticker. And if I use your question, I'll send you a sticker. If you don't include your name and address, or if like Dave Barker, you don't include the actual answer to the question, <laughs> idiot, um, then I, obviously I won't send you a sticker. Uh, right, where are we doing now? Ooh, stickers. Paul Di Tommaso. Hello, everybody. Hey, Paul. Welcome, dude. I've built, I've built that so far. Some tracks. You may get a flashback to the last show where I built some tracks. Yeah. Uh, today we're doing, or we started doing, the Hydra or Wyvern. I think I'm gonna do. The, I'll, I'll do the. I'll make both of them. Yeah, but yeah, not got, not got very far. Sorry about that. Right. Have a quick look at the email because JS Ido has just sent me an email. Uh, oh, uh, Mark Dale has sent me a picture of Max. Hi, Fox. Looks like you have a new follower and Max, a new hero. Trip to Warhammer World being organized. <laughs> nice one. Yes. <laughs> that was a terrible. Thank you for the picture. Hi, Max. If you remember at the start, he told me he was nagging him to go to one world. So I said, keep nagging your dad. Never tell me you've got someone I need to influence. Otherwise, I'll influence them. <sighs> uh, okay, right. Brilliant. We have, uh, we have, there we go. Please send two. Thanks, Jeremy. Got your questions right. We have three stickers to give away. Uh, I think I've still got some gross models and dad stickers, but I couldn't find them in time. So three, uh, three of these today. We've got three questions. Right. Uh, I need my Sharpie pen because, because, where's my Sharpie pen? Yeah, it's the Sharpie pen. I kind of, there it is. Oh, that's already got writing on it. Blums. Oh, well, never mind. Um, I shall write on this one. Limpet. And on this one, I shall write sponge. I don't know why I write silly words on the back. I just like to write silly words on the back. So we have three stickers, all model making guru stickers. So what we need to do, I'm going to ask you a question and answer. And the first one to get the answer right wins a sticker. Before we go anywhere, you know what you need to do. Uh, there's always a lag between the video and the audio by this point. So the first thing you need to do before we do anything is refresh your browser. And then when it's refreshed, drag the slidey bar all the way over to the right. So while you do that, I shall have a big swig of the coffee. Oh. Ah. Uh, I'm going to see about doing some work on my squadron Hanabu 2, says Paul. That's the uh, the German UFO vehicle. It's not actually real, but caused the stink. Because some people are so stupid, they might think it is. Frankie goes, Tommy Wood, good evening. Welcome, Frankie. You just turned up just in time. Both of you just turned up just in time for the sticker giveaway. I like this. I see how this goes, you know. I'm quite surprised that um, making models, Carl turned up more than 20 minutes before the sticker giveaway because normally Carl you turn up just before we do the stickers it's, it's quite a talent uh, right uh, hold your plums says Osric 9000 um, Limpet For, uh, Model Making Guru did you read the Infernal Machines novels recently or is that just coincidence um, no I've not read those books I have no desire to read I don't read books I'm far too lazy I haven't seen the films either I like the word Limpet it's a great word uh, oh, there's a Radio Merseyside listener, eh? Says Osric. What? What? Hold your plums. <laughs> Jolly FM, coming in your ears. Right, I'm sure you've all refreshed by now. Uh, so, are we ready? We have three questions. Um, okay, we have three questions. Uh, I'll get my brain working. Hang on, brain. Right. Is everybody ready? 
We've got um, one Warhammer, one definitely not Warhammer, uh, and one also definitely not Warhammer. So, first question. Everybody ready? What do the Ta'au in Warhammer, what do the Ta'au or Tau fight for? Go. So Reynolds says he's got some sacrificial Ta'au. You missed out the apostrophe, Sai. What do the Tau fight for? Or the Tau? Tyrone Key, straight in with the greater good. Apostrophe, says Osric 9000. Tyrone Key, well done. Uh, I shall send you Limpet. Well done, Tyrone. All you need to do uh, is send me an email with your name and your address. And tell me that you want a Model Making Guru sticker. Send it to fox at modelmakingguru.com. Uh, if I've still got a load of stickers I need to send out, I just haven't had a chance over Christmas. Uh, if you're still waiting for stickers, don't panic. They will come to you. If you've already sent me a mail in the last few weeks for a sticker and I haven't sent it out yet, and you've already sent me your name and address, still send me an email today anyway. And purely because if I see there's five emails from you, I know I need to send you five stickers. So even if you're waiting for something to be sent to you, send me your email with your name and address anyway. Just say you want a model making guru sticker. And if you have a different name on the on the YouTube chat than your actual name, um, then make sure to put who you are in the YouTube in the email so I know who you are, kind of thing. You know what I mean. So Tyrone, well done. Two left. Second question. Tyrone Key says, mm, limp it. Uh, other answers that we have, we had apostrophes cake, the greater ood, says Scott Sutherland. That's Doctor Who. Uh, freedom, says Nim. China in the hands. Uh, good, corrects himself, Scott Sutherland. Jamie Bowen says cheese and onion. Yeah, I'd fight with cheese and onion. Sausage rolls, says Dave. Don't like sausage rolls. Scott the ood are in Doctor Who, says Carl at making models. <laughs> yeah. Paul De Tomas is going for a great big wee. I know that feeling. Uh... No clue on Warhamster questions, says Frankie Ghost Hobbywood. Uh, Dirty Llama Model says, Super late, but happy I'm able to catch the end of the stream. We've got a while to go. You've got another hour at least, yeah. You're not, not that late, dude. Well, you are that late, but not that late. Uh, you're in time to win a sticker. <laughs> Timed it well. So, second question for another sticker. Uh, okay, right. Everybody ready? You have to get your 1970s awesome classic hat on now. Everybody ready? Uh, something keeps catching on the wire. Hang on, let me just that. There we go. Right. In the movie, Smokey and the Bandit. Okay, you see where we're going with this. I'm looking for two names. I'm looking for the name of both the character. Hang on. What was the name of? Okay, you, you kind of assassinated the sentence in the question there. There we go. Right. What was the name, both the character and the actor, of Smokey the Bandit's kind of bad guy? Is is, uh, is is what's the word I'm looking for? You know what I mean. I can't really say too much. Who was Smokey's enemy? Who was Smokey in the Bandit? Who's Smokey's enemy? I want the actor's name and the character name. That's the wrong film, Dad. Not Ben Kingsley and Gandhi either. Who was his arch nemesis? Who was his who was his uh, enemy? Do 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 do. Both the actor and the character that was Smokey's antagonist, Professor Snape, Alan Rickman, Simpleton. Minette. Shut up. Sorry about the grammatical error, Fox. No, no, it's fine. You just kind of, it wasn't the grammatical. You just put the completely wrong word in there. And I was like, what? Uh, one of you has half answered it. Now remember, I go off, I go off the the answer I'm given in the email. Deedle, 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 deedle. Si Reynolds says, my Google skills have failed me, so I say 42. Don't think anybody's going to get it. Nah, but he's going to get that one. Right, well, we'll call that one Dead on Arrival. Uh, one of you did get half of it, uh, but I can't give you half a sticker. 
So we'll call that one abandoned. Uh, the answer was uh, Sheriff Buford T. Justice and the actor was Jackie Gleason. So there you go. Right, so never mind. Move on to the next one. There's still two stickers up for grabs. Uh, right, so next question then. Well, hopefully somebody will get this one. Now, there are a couple of different answers to this one. So I want the answer that I've been given. There are actually genuinely three or four different answers to this question. So I'm going to see if the first one that gets the same answer I've got. So here we go. Gundam time. Mobile suit Gundam type genre. Uh... Oh, Space Hamster came in there just after I said the answer. Don't! You did get half the answer earlier on, Space Hamster. Oh. You know what? I'll give you a sticker anyway. Screw it. Let's just do it. We'll do four stickers today because that was probably on the cusp. Let me get an extra sticker out. You know what? You know what? Nobody's a bad guy. Let me get another sticker out. Butts and Aviad. <laughs> yeah, I don't always send somebody a sticker when they win. Right, so... <laughs> If you know me, you know that what I used to do was write people's name on the sticker and then send them a completely different sticker. So that was Space Hamster. So there we go, Space Hamster. Now, Aviad will have had his sticker, don't worry. It just means I would have sent him a different sticker. So Space Hamster, I'll give you that one. Send me an email with your name and address. Uh, tell me that you want a model making guru sticker and I'll get that sent out to you. There you go. I'm a good guy. Right. Uh, okay, Gundam question. Still got two stickers to get. Gundam question. What is the name of the armor alloy used on a Gundam? Go. Basically, what is this? What is the magical space material that they came up with that Gundams are made of? Now, there are different answers to this. There are multiple different answers. So I want the first one to get the answer that I've got here in this email, which is correct, but it's one of many. Uh, Dirty Llama Model. I think I said that Welsh then. Dirty Llama Model says Gundanium. Uh, and that's the answer I've got here. So Dirty Llama Models, well done. I keep wanting to say Llama, like Welsh. I don't know why. Uh, I'll give you plums. Dirty Llama. So well done. Send me an email. Fox at modelmakingguru.com. Just tell me that you want a model making guru sticker. And like I say, if, you, if your name on the YouTube chat isn't actually your real name, like Dirty Llama, probably isn't your real name, just make sure you say, I am such and such and I want this sticker. There we go. We also have, what else did we have? Adamantium uh, Stinken Poopen Farten, says Osric. Big Silly Robot Juice, says Gaz. Gundanium Alloy. A bit slow there. Gundanium, Aluminium Foil, Vibranium. Most are plastic, says Bur Bury Models. Well done. I like that. Plot says Team Inept. <laughs> Lol. Uh, right, so there we go. So we've got one left now. Sponge. Let's see who can win Sponge. So we got uh, got some questions from. Okay, we've got a question from Scott Sutherland in Orkney. Uh, and as always, it's a question kind of related to his part of the world. So is everybody ready for the final question for the final sticker giveaway? Ready. Okay. What is the name of the causeways built to protect Scapa Flow? Go. What is the name of the causeways built to protect Scapa Flow? You can guess there's a World War II vibe going on here. Scapa Flow. There's some causeways. What are they called? More puffins, says Dad. I'll just get I'll just get um, Guthorm on there. He can maybe give you some ideas. Just checking out sticker goodness. No, Scapa Flow Causeway. It's a bit more, bit more in depth than that. That will be a bit easy. Uh, uh, Dad is straight in there with. I think that's the first one. A puffling says Nim Cinderin. Scapa Stopper to flow <laughs> says Team Inept. Uh, yes, Dad says Churchill Barriers followed by Cy Reynolds saying at Churchill Barriers. Dad, well done. You've got yourself a, a sponge sticker. So I'll just put dad. There you go. I know I've got your name and address somewhere, but send me an email anyway with your deets because I'll need it to remind me to send you a sticker. So there you go. Well done, dad. Four stickers given away. And all I can smell now is Sharpie because I left the lid off like a spoon. Woohoo! That was a bad move. Ooh. So well done. Well done, you see. I gave four away today, not three. Coffee time. Because I'm a big softy. I could not give out that extra sticker because it really was a question of a couple of seconds either way. 
Uh, I'd watch a model making puffin live stream, says Candy Grant from Mongo. Yes, Cy Reynolds says curses to dad. I don't know what I'd do. I could just what, just put that there and leave it there for ages. Just have him looking at the cam. Just have him looking at the camera like that so you can't see my hands and just like looking around, doing nothing for like three hours. I get kind of bored. Anyway, yes. So, well done to all the stickery winners. Uh, still not doing the wheel of giveaways just yet. If you remember, we've not done that for a few weeks now. And I did say, uh, go back to, I think, November last year, or early December. I'm just taking a break from the wheel of giveaways for a little while, purely because uh, it's not cheap sending all these prizes out. And I'm trying to get my finances sorted out. Um, so I'm just trying to get myself back on my feet a little bit. Uh, so it's coming back, don't worry. Wheel of giveaways will be coming back because I've got a big stash of stuff to give away. I just need to wait till I can more easily afford to send all these things out to you. So keep your eyes open. Uh, in the next few weeks, probably we'll have some more giveaways because I've got some really good stuff to give away. Here's an announcement as well. Here's an announcement. Um, if you look at my YouTube channel, you may notice it's creeping up to 20,000 followers. I'm about 500 off or something. Um, this isn't a plea for people to suddenly follow me because you're all following me anyway. However, I will be doing a giveaway when I hit 20,000 followers. And I think I might be giving away something rather special. I might be giving away something really special. So stay tuned. Uh, probably in the next couple of months, I would guess, next month or so. When we hit 20,000 followers, I will be doing a very special giveaway. So stay tuned. So where are we up to? Let's have a look. Uh... Shoes, congrats, Fox, says Jess. Oh, not they, about 19,500 at the minute. Uh, yay, says Nim Cinderin. Woohoo, says Paul Di Tommaso. Lol, says Dad. Buy some pigeons for delivery prizes. Yeah, it's, it's I love doing the giveaways because I love giving you guys stuff and you can win things. It's just, I'm getting to the point now where all the prizes are kind of big. They're not little boxes, they're like the kind of like big things now. And it's like, yeah, it's going to cost me like 30 quid first. Bit. So I don't mind. I'm, I'm not going to complain about doing that. I'd much, I've no problem doing it. It's just, when I was doing like four a month, it was costing me 150 quid a month to post stuff out, and I, I can't, I can't support that. So I'm just taking a little time off so I can build up some, some funds so that I can easily send stuff out to you guys because I like giving stuff away to you guys. You guys are awesome. You guys support me so much. It means a lot to me that I can actually give something back. So it might be something that we 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 do like once every couple of weeks or once a month or something like that. We'll do a we'll do the wheel of giveaways. It's not gone away. People that have sent me stuff for the wheel of giveaways. I am going to give them away. Don't panic. They're not being sold or anything like that. Uh, everything I am ever given to do as a giveaway prize goes as a giveaway prize. I'm never, no matter how tempted I am to just make the damn things, because they're awesome, I would never do that. If you send me something to give away, I will give it away. Right, so let's crack on anyway. We've got some holly bits to do now. <laughs> So yes, when we hit 20,000 followers, I'm thinking something something very special, I think. Something very, very nice. I don't know for sure. I'm not 100% sure. But I'm thinking potentially, maybe, something Verkar. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not... So don't take it absolutely ready. It might not be anything at all like that. It might be. Possibly. Something Vercar. Oh, look at the big knobs on there. I'm not using my expensive god hand nippers on those. No, 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 no. Pating, pating, pating. Where's my, where's my throwaway nippers? I don't want to use my expensive god hands. Because I'll break them into a thousand pieces. Uh, we'll just gently nip them off there. And we'll nip that off. That's not going to cut there, is it? Let's do it there. The downside with these Games Workshop things, sometimes they put the piece so close to the sprue that you can't actually get in there to get it off. Uh, so we need those three pieces. Eins, fine, die. Das ist richtig. If it's what I think, bro, I'm completely fine with that, of course, says Cy Reynolds. Uh, I think it, I might be I might be thinking the same thing. If it was one you sent me as a giveaway prize, I was just thinking because it's in my giveaway stash. I can't remember. I'm not sure though. I don't, I'm not decided yet. Um, but there are some, there are some awesome things in my giveaway stash. So we shall see. We shall see. 
Though I don't think, I can't remember if that was in my giveaway stash or not. I don't even know if I'm talking about the same thing. I don't know. I've for, actually forgotten what's in my stash now. So, yeah. I'll have, I need to have a look through my giveaway prize stash and see exactly what's in there. It would be like, ironic if, if you actually won the thing. <laughs> That'd be quite funny, really. Uh, you can cheat and give away a Gundam Wing Endless Waltz Master Grade. Those are all Kotoki designs, just not branded and priced as such. Yeah, they're a bit small. They're not that fantastic. I've actually, I say I've got to, I don't want to say out loud what I was looking, thinking of then, purely because I was looking at what's right in front of me in this room right now, but I know in the other room there's a stash of other giveaway prizes, so I'm not fully sure what is in my giveaway stash off the top of my head i've not looked at it for a little while so i need to go through my giveaway pile and see exactly what there is for me to give away as a little little nice treat i need to go through my stash and see what it is uh, but if it's not what i'm thinking it might be it'll be something nice just to celebrate you know twenty thousand subscribers and I was really heartened, actually. I have to tell you, I was really heartened. YouTube did a thing recently where they, if you're not a YouTube channel creator, you won't know this, but we all got a thing on our top of our YouTube screens whenever you logged into YouTube as a creator saying, hey, we're going to be going through and getting rid of duplicate and fake and dead accounts and spam accounts. So you might see a drop in your subscribers as we get rid of all these false accounts. Because, you know, you get lots of like automated bot accounts and things and you've got a channel with subscribers you can't guarantee all of those subscribers are actually real people or real channels that have subscribed uh, so it just said hey we're going to be doing this so you might you might lose some subscribers here and there but don't panic it's just as getting rid of non non-real accounts um, and i'd lost apparently none it's fantastic so it means that all my followers are all real people which is fantastic and i love it so thank you very much but talking of winning cool stuff don't forget of course uh, the um, stream boss battle if you want to be in with the chance of winning a couple of hundred or more quids worth of cool warhammer stuff get play in the stream boss game aviad is the current stream boss our stream boss is lording it over us from sunny israel right now If you want to try and be in a chance of winning stuff, if you want to know what you need to do, all you need to do is whittle away Aviad's health till it gets to zero, and then you'll become, if you get him to zero, you become the new stream boss. And you can win two or three hundred quid worth of good stuff, either Warhammer or uh, sorry, Games Workshop or Forge World stuff. Basically, you just need to knock his health down by either subscribing to this channel if you're not already a subscriber subscribing hit the notification bell that takes a little tiny bit of his health off uh, or you can put a super chat which is the little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window that also knocks a little bit of his health off or if you want to you can do a tip through the tip jar which is at the bottom of the screen down here where is it i know where the camera is uh, streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru keep in mind the bigger the tip or the bigger the uh, street, the uh, super chat amount, the more health you take off him. And you all work together as a group, basically, to try and get his health down. And whoever hits that magic one that takes his health to zero, all that money raised through the tips and the super chats sits in a pot. Uh, and if you get his health to zero, that becomes your pot. And all I will then do is send you an email that says, hey, you're the new stream boss, or you become the new stream boss, so your name will be up there on telly. Uh, you'll be the new stream boss, and I'll send you a mail that says, hey, you're the new stream boss. Tell me what you, here's your budget. Tell me what you want me to order for you. And basically all I do is I take the I take the, the money in the, in the pot, and I order whatever you want me to order from either the Games Workshop website or the Forge Bigger, World website. Bigger. Oh, a late Yuletide gift from snowy New York from Nim Cinderin. Thank you very much, dude. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. Aviad's health's gone down a little bit. Awesome. Now, a few of you have asked me, can I send you other things? Like, what if you don't want Warhammer stuff? Well, you're kind of watching a Warhammer stream, but 
there's a very good reason I'm going to limit it to Warhammer stuff or Forge World stuff. Uh, and that is twofold. Uh, one, if anything goes wrong with the order, if it gets lost in the post or destroyed or anything like that, both Forge World and Warhammer will just replace it out. They'll just say, yeah, no problem, we'll send a new one for you. They're super awesome. If it goes wrong, they'll just replace it. Second of all, uh, with... I'm not fully sure what the amount is on Forge World, but with Games Workshop, um, I think with Forge World as well, over a certain amount of spending, the shipping is absolutely free. Now, when you win the pot, if you win like 300 quids worth of stuff on the, from the pot, that's including any shipping costs. It, that pot is going to pay for everything, whatever you want to order and the shipping costs. If you order from Games Workshop or Forge World, that shipping will be free over, I think it's like 100 quid or something in Forge World and 75 or 50 quid in, um, I can't remember the exact numbers anyway. Basically, it means that you can factor out shipping. So you've got more money to spend on awesome, cool things and not worry about shipping. Because I'm not covering the cost of shipping and you, you don't want to pay it. So, um, And also, it's just a lot more reliable. Uh, if I order a thing from a store, they say, can I order this? And it's not from Games Workshop or Warhammer like a gumplet or something like that there's no guarantee it'll ever get to you if it does get to you you'll have had to pay shipping and all the other things uh if it does disappear in the post there's no guarantee that retailer will want to even replace it if i if you just stick to warhammer and forge world if something goes wrong with that order they just sort it out for you there's no fuss no muss it's guaranteed you receive it and it guarantees because it'll be over 200 quid that you're spending you probably won't pay any shipping on it at all so it's more money for you to play with, basically. More money for you to spend on good things and not waste on the cost of actually getting the thing. Is it the right way around? Do, 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 do. Right, that's on there and that's on there. So you want... So, yep, get your super tips and your... Super tips, get your chats and your... Oh, I can't get it right. Your super chats and your tips coming in. Maybe you'll win. So that needs to go on there. I couldn't figure this out last time I did this. I made a hash of it as well. That goes on there like that. We'll see. Yes, very good, very good. That's it, slash I need that to go on there. And then that goes on here like this. you we'll see. Kaplink, like that. Excellent, excellent. I'm just doing it this way so I can line everything up. Put the glue there. Do do. I'll check chat in a moment. Oh no! Well, there we go. Everything fits perfectly, so I have to glue it in place, and then I become like a complete cat-handed spoon. With the manual dexterity of a tree. Doodle-doo-doo-doo-doo, Stacey. Doodle-doo-doo-doo-doo. can go on there. Like that, and like that. Put it down the front. Now, I don't want to squish these together too hard because you get glue splooping out and then it looks really ass on this front panel here. I don't mind it having a gap because it looks like it's just been two plates welded together, but I don't want it to look like complete ass either, so. What's that on there? And also the back panel, yeah, that's a switch, dude. Go on there like that. Here's a question for you, for those of you who are watching this and actually do like the Warhammers. 
What would you like to see in 2019 from Games Workshop? Be it 40k or other. What's on your wish list? As always, my wish list is Plastic Deathcore Creek. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Plastic Deathcore Creek. I just love that. Be like, wait. I can have Deathcore Creek, but in plastic. So no fussing, no mussing. <gasps> I'd be so happy with that. Because <clears throat> I was looking at the quality of like you know the Tempestus sounds and they're beautiful little sculpts, apart from the stupid nonsense with the split arm, which is ridiculous. But they are beautiful little sculpts, and if they could do that with the Death Core, oh, that would be so divine, darling. We'll have to fart about with the resin. That'd be just the best thing ever. Uh, and there is a bit of a precedent for it. You know, the Bane Blade, like we said before in the show, the Bane Blade used to be a Forge World exclusive kit. Until it suddenly wasn't, and you could get it in plastic. And it, I do wonder what led them to do that, other than everybody wanted it, maybe, and they thought there was money to be made, which is the most obvious answer. And they managed to make it so that the Bane Blade itself is now a past plastic kit, but you can still buy variants on exclusive variants from Forge World that you need the Bane Blade plastic kit for. But they have some resin parts. But yeah, that was quite a move they made. It was like, make sure that's flat. It's like, here's the Bane Blade, it's a plastic kit. Yay, flatness. I love that book. <laughs> nice little notebook, little present there. So I'm going to leave that to sit for a second. My stomach is rumbling like a category four thunderstorm, and I don't know what that even means, but it's rumbling like bilio. Uh, what is chat doing? Uh, yeah, but Wing Proto Verkar is amazing, even if smaller than, say, a strike. Yeah, it's still Wing now. I don't know. I'd much rather give something away. There's more. more. Yeah, you, you're right. Team says 19,500 utter dafties. Yes, but lovable utter dafties. Uh, I'm a replicant, says JS Idaho. Ye gods, just used a whole bottle of paint on a torpedo room, says Dad. Yes, Dad, Dad, Dad's, like I said before, Dad's making his 148 scale U boat. Yeah, it's the size of a house. Uh, it's the size of a house. Whoa, whoa. Bit of madness there. Uh, at my next build night, I shall pimp your page. I already have a couple of people that actually build war hamsters, says Nim. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Uh, um, uh, Dad, is it bad that I always read ye gads in the voice of Pinky from Pinky and the Brain? <laughs> yeah, now I can hear that in my head now. Uh, Paul DiTomaso, my war, ham my war hamster is slowly coming along. Jolly good. Pictures in the boo hook, please. Uh, I've wondered how much it might be cost just to paint one of those giant models, says Candy Grand for Mongo at Dad Painting. is it, It's four foot long. So, yeah, it's uh, take quite a lot of paint. It's the, it's the kind of model that if it wasn't miserable outside, I would be very tempted just to buy two or three rattle cans of Tamiya paint. Um, when I did my 7C U-boat, it was 172nd scale. That was three foot long. Uh, I used rattle cans of neutral grey and German grey to me rattle cans. Um, and at the time, I didn't want to kill the entire garden, so I basically got a cheap tent and I put a tent up in the back garden and I sat in this tent with a respirator on and I sprayed the crap out of it, the German grey and the neutral grey, to get my two-tone U-boat. Yeah, that was a good few years ago. <laughs> and then I put the tent away and never used it since because I got this tent on the off chance that... Uh, if I wanted to to paint something, but maybe it was a bit, it wasn't particularly wet and humid, but it was it was there's a chance of spitting or rain. I could still use a tent. I could go in the garden and still spray, but not be affected by the rain. So there you go. Uh, do, 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 do. What's chat doing? Uh, I can't read the chat now. It's moved. Hey, Fox, have you heard that Games Workshop is putting up the price of their paints and start collecting box? It does not bother me, but what do you think about it, says Tara and Key. Um, it's fine. I think they're putting up the cost of paint like a little tiny bit, like a few pence. Like 20p, I think, at the most. Um, and the start collecting boxes, 
probably a little bit on those but even if they're putting those up at the end of the day um you're still getting probably 90 to 100 quid worth of stuff for about fit well currently if you get one of the star collecting boxes if you've not seen one of these uh, if you're looking at getting into warhammer and you're going to be playing the game you really can't go wrong with the start collecting sets um it's basically for most of them it's like 10 or 11 dudes and maybe a vehicle like the astra militarum start collecting is a lehman rust tank um 10 imperial guard and a commissar and i think a sergeant as well and a heavy weapons squad and it's 50 quid they're all 50 quid at the moment the start collecting sets yet that kit itself if you if you bought separately the lehman rust because they're all sets of stuff you can get separately. The Lehman Russ and the Imperial Guard guys and the Commissar. You're probably looking at about 80 or 90 quid. So without exception, all the start collecting sets are worth a lot more than you actually pay for them. But Games Workshop know that. They know that they can get you in. You get a start collecting set, you can start playing the game. It's basically a little small army you can start having a little com combat with. Skirmishes and stuff. So you're paying 50. If they put the price up even to five and now, let's say they put it up to 55 quid. You're still paying 55 quid for 90 or 100 quid worth of stuff. So, yeah, I, that doesn't really bother me. It's still a super cheap way to get into it. I mean, there's a whole argument about Games Workshop's pricing, but that's a whole different thing anyway. Um, if you're not that happy with Games Workshop pricing, you just don't buy their stuff. It's a whole different kettle of fish to normal model making. But yeah, a little bit extra. Uh, Fox, it's 40 quid Games Workshop. What's 40 quid? I've lost. I've got confused now. What's 40 quid? Uh, hey, look, it's a delightful dad's device. I've got a few of them. Look. <laughs> got my hangman dad device. Oh, and this one as well. Yes, of course, that's a dad device. Uh, ooh, sticking. For some reason, I found that it's like sprue glue. It's really hard to get out. But the other ones fit perfectly. I think I've squashed it or it's shrunk. Not a bad thing, it's the anti spillage device. Uh, I'd like to see some non fugly blood letters, but that probably not going to happen. Yeah, probably not. Oh, yeah, this is uh, this is what I said about you know, what do you, what would you look forward to in the year? In this year, I, I, I say plastic, plastic death call would be my dream, but there you go. Uh, a, a lot more Tempesta Scions, but without the two piece arm, I'd love that, that'd be brilliant. A monster for the night haunt, as we only have the Forge World Mongol, says much of that model. Yeah, yeah, the thing with Sigma, there's a lot of stuff you have to get on Forge World. But then again, Forge, Forge World's not that bad. It's not that bad. If you're not too fussed about resin. I just really kind of have an aversion to resin. Uh, Vincent says, revamped Bretonians in Age of Sigma or something other than the Order side rather than more Stormcast. Seems only attention in revamping and new models with the evil orders at the moment. Chaos, death and destruction. Yeah, true. They do tend to go a lot for the mainstream stuff. Although, like if they're doing with the 40k now with like Gene Stealers and stuff, hopefully we'll start expanding out to more of the lesser known stuff. Uh, I think what they should do with, this, with the Sigma, what they need is more of the start collecting type stuff in the same way there's two things you get warhammer 40k you get the start collecting which is your, your entrance drug your gateway drug 100 quid worth of stuff for half the price um and you get your um what's the other one the little the little tiny starter boxes like the little skirmish sets like no no fear where it's like 10 dudes five space marines five chaos marines and a little play board I know they do have some sort of start collecting stuff for Age of Sigma, but if they did a lot more start collecting sets and they did a lot more of the little skirmish sets like that as little gateway drugs for Age of Sigma, oh yeah, they'd be in, in, in the, would be a good thing. Uh, Primark Korax coming back, says Scott Sutherland. Ooh. Full size Titans in plastic, says Osric 9000. Yeah, I'd be all over that. I would be all over that. Wouldn't cost a grand and a half. I would like to see some more Eldar mechs, says LD. Fox, it was a metal kit and weighed a ton, then it went to plastic. What was? You've lost me completely. Is this the, the Bane Blade? I thought the Bane Blade was resin. Uh... Roadkill Raker says he's been ordering some Vallejo mecha colours off eBay and the best price for shipping has been from models has been $3.55 for GB. Fox, 40 quid, and you... Oh, right, 40 quid, and you get free posting, says Tyrone. That's with, uh, with Games Workshop. Cool. 
Yes, because I know when uh, when Avi had one his, it was two hundred and eighty quid's worth of stuff from Games Workshop. We split it into two separate orders. Um, but we it was two hundred and eighty quid's worth, of, and for both the orders that we split into two of, it was free shipping. And that was me. That was going to Israel, so that's why I'm keeping the the prize for the stream boss battle. I'm keeping it to Games Workshop and Forward because we do get that free shipping basically anywhere and they they send it to pretty much anywhere so uh, so for quality and for safety and for just making most of the money for you to buy things not for you to pay the shipping cost um uh, bane blade is plastic i saw one today yeah I, I, it is it used to just be a forge wall resin kit and then they decided to make it a plastic kit as well mm-hmm <laughs> Uh, Vincent says, yeah, it's what they are doing with the Gloom Spike pre-order set boxes at the moment. Entire armies, even they've got, start collecting stuff and battle boxes for everything they've revamped so far. Fox, they do little skirmish sets for Age of Sigmar. I can't remember what they are called. Uh, they, uh, you could be right, actually. I might have misspoken there. I don't think they're as prevalent, though, as, as Warhammer. I'm sorry, uh, 40k. I don't think they're as prevalent as 40k. <laughs> I don't really know. It's difficult for me to say for sure. I should really shut up because I don't really know because I look at the 40k stuff. When I look at the, the actual Age of Sigma stuff, it's all just may as well be in a foreign language. I'm like, I don't know what any of this means. I don't know what any of that means. Uh, right, we've got a part. Oh, we've got some numbered parts now. Woo! Now we get some numbered parts. Yeah, there we go. Because this is um, this is probably the old. Uh, this is probably the same. This is the wow. Hello, words. This is the same sprue from the Chimera and earlier kits. Just not numbered. This is a modern kit, numbered. Yes. Look at that. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And just begging to be brush painted. I've got to tell you guys. <clears throat> I've got to be really blatantly honest with you guys. That I keep knocking the camera. It's really annoying. Um, I've got to be honest with you guys. Ever since starting doing the Warhammers, and I've said this before, I've grown to hate using an airbrush. Because brush painting is fun and immediate and you don't have to think about it. Uh, and it's just more exciting and fun. And I, I like the results. Uh, to the point that I'll try and avoid using an airbrush as much as possible. I'm going to be honest with you, going forward, you're probably going to see a lot less airbrushy stuff on my channel. Not completely because there'll always be things i have to do with an airbrush like you know varnish coats uh, some effects i'll need to use an airbrush for and there'll be some builds where i have no choice but to use an airbrush but if i can build a kit and don't have to use an airbrush <coughs> then for example <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the strike rouge i'm doing at the minute I use the airbrush on that because it's a nice, smooth, clean paint job. So it's got to look nice and smooth and clean. Uh, however, when I do the uh, Master Grade Sazabi Verkar, which is the build after next from the uh, Strike, then that will actually be a lot of that, if not most of it, will be brush painted because it's going to be weathered and grubby and dirty and a bit battered. Um, so I can do brush painting on that and it'll just be like doing a ginormous Imperial Knight effectively. That's the way I'm looking at it. So just so you know, going forward, because I'm having a lot of fun doing brush painted jobs, going forward a lot of my stuff will be brush painted where I can not have to use an airbrush. Like I said, there may be times when I have to use an airbrush and I've got no choice in that case. No, you know, it's fine. I don't mind. It's just given the choice between getting a piece primed and just painting it, or getting a piece primed and then farting about with the airbrush and trying to figure out how to film me spray something. And it's it's just it's a pain in the bum. It's a lot of faff to do. It's a pain in the bum for filming. I'll be honest with you. It's a pain in the bum to film airbrush painting. And the other technical reasons it's just it just it's a lot easier for me and it's a lot more fun for me if i just brush paint it so yes going forward more brush painting because at the end of the day 
I'm always going to gravitate towards what I enjoy and what I find fun. And I gotta tell you, brush painting at the moment, I'm having so much fun doing it. Like that little that little tank we did on the Christmas stream. You know, brush paint it, weather it, great fun. And I'm learning a lot of things that you can do actually with brush painting that you wouldn't think you could. Like pre shading or creating the effect of pre shading. Who'd have thought you could get a similar effect with dry brushing? It's great. Right, that's there. How's that looking for scratches? Ooh, a bit too many. Let's just get more sanding on that. I will come have a look at chat in a moment. Got quite anal at the moment about getting rid of sanding marks and scratches. There's another reason why. I was good that I pre-built and pre-sanded and pre-primed my tank on the Christmas show. I would have been there for hours doing this. It's all I would have got done in the show, so. If you filtered out all the limes Fox failed to do his words properly, how short would the streams actually be, says Paul at Team Inept. Uh, about a minute. Just got to start collecting Seraphon, the old world lizard man. 21 miniatures, 8 mounted, and one huge dinosaur with angry dude on its back, says David Butcher, that model. Cool. Dave likes his Age of Sigma stuff. I quite like the scave, look of the Skaven. If I do get some Age of Sigma stuff, I probably wouldn't play it, but I do quite like the look of the, the Skaven. The rat dudes. It appeals to my anthropomorphic sense. Uh, Fox, the Bane Blade was resin, then metal, and fine. I didn't realise it was metal. Wow. God, we're a ton. Metal Bane Blade. Holy crap. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, LD never had an airbrush, so not fussed. Yeah. That's the thing as well. I mean, there's a lot of good things you can do with an airbrush. And I, I, I do love my airbrush and stuff, but it's just after having my eyes open to brush painting and the things you can do with just brushes. Yeah, you're never going to get the smoothness and, and colour fades and gradations that you get with an airbrush, but you can get pretty damn close. And it just gives a different look. It gives a different feel, which I actually find quite pleasing. A kind of painterly style, almost sort of slightly chunky style. But I do find quite aesthetically pleasing. And I'm just having fun. I'm Imperial Knight. I painted that over the course of a, you know, maybe a week or so in the summer in the garden. Because it was a million degrees. I couldn't work in here because it was too hot. That's why I didn't do much over the summer. Because it was too damn hot to do any work in here. So I just sat in the garden. When the sun had gone round the side of the house, so it wasn't quite in direct sunlight. I could sit at the garden table outside. Take my little project box out there, my paints and stuff, work on my Imperial Knight. And it was great fun. I had a great time doing that. Because it was all brush painted. Do 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 do. I like to think I'm not knocking airbrushing, but airbrushing, once you've got the hang of how to actually do the airbrushing. You know, painting something with an airbrush. If you wonder what I'm doing, I'm just checking the edges, by the way. Um, painting with an airbrush is kind of easy. You want to do a nice faded colour or a camouflage effect? There you go. No, it's not that hard. Whereas doing that with a brush, I don't know. I just see I'm, the way it's going for me at the minute. I'm seeing myself. I'm putting a lot more effort and thought into my paint jobs when I'm brush painting them than I do with an airbrush when I just kind of just... I just turn the airbrush on the spray and it just comes out looking nice. Um, I just It's just my impression, but I get the impression that it's kind of a lot more rewarding. I feel, I, myself personally, I'm feeling a lot more engaged with the project and rewarded by it when it comes out looking okay 
when I brush painted it, the one I've airbrushed it. Because when I've airbrushed something, it just, all I can say is, well, I pulled the trigger. Meh, there you go. Yeah, you get a nice smooth finish with a brush job. It takes a lot more skill than just pulling a trigger. I don't know, I just, I just feel it's, I'm, I'm having to think of a lot more creative solutions to things by just limiting it to brush painting. Like if I, if in, I want to say, I want to say, I want to go from this colour to that colour. If you're airbrushing it, you just airbrush it. There you go, you've faded, no problem. If you're brush painting it, thinking about how the hell do I do that? Uh, where's the chat doing? Actually, like, isn't the airbrush on larger minis like that creature caster thing I posted on the Boom Hut recently? You can be loose and just get cool effects really quickly, says Space Hamster. Yeah, I mean, this, I, do, I do still have some good fun with the airbrush. But I, in my old age, I'm getting lazy and I can't be doing all the faff. Don't get me wrong, an airbrush, a beautifully airbrush model will always look vastly superior in a lot of ways to a beautifully brush painted model, just for the pure quality of the finish. I don't know. It's kind of the old analog versus digital argument for people that record, you know, music, that kind of thing. Really, I'm having a blast doing brushing, whereas I've kind of got bored of airbrushing because it's it's like autopilot for me now. For me, it just feels less creative. <laughs> but I'll go back to it. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, also, tanks in one thirty fifth can get very big, so doing it all with a brush, yeah, doesn't work as well for all genre and scales. I suppose love doing all the detail brushing and blocking in in the figures there. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. This kind of size thing is probably about as big as you want to get. Obviously, if it was a big model, like when I do the Millennium Falcon, the perfect grade Millennium Falcon, yeah, we're going to be airbrushing that. That's not going to be a brush paint job. <laughs> yeah. There are certain practical reasons why you use an airbrush. Uh, to be honest, Dave, I think that's a bit black and white. I enjoy better. Uh, wait, what? Me Mephiston Red is for Blood Angels and Liverpool fans. Lol. Hang on, stop. I've missed a conversation there. Dave likes Age of Sigma because Dave is right, says Paul. Airbrushing and brush painting is like music on CD or record. You will love one or the other, says Dave. Yes, exactly. I was just saying a minute ago about the analog is digital. Uh, Mephiston Red, correct. Oh, Paul says, there's no way I've been able to do that power armor helmet with airbrush. That, that would have taken forever. Thank feck for Mephiston Red rattle cans. Mephiston Red, correct, says Dad. Because Dad's a, a Liverpool fan or something to do with football, I don't know. And also, he likes the red stuff. Mephiston Red is for Blood Angels and Liverpool fans, says Dad. Uh, says Dave. Dad says, lol. We're having a football conversation now, so I've tuned it out. I don't understand any of it. CD is okay in the car, but you can't beat the crackle of a real record. You can't really play, you can't really get a, a seventy-two in the uh, in the car. <laughs> oh. I can't do blue, Jamie says. Dad, why not? Says Jamie. It's a football thing, Jamie. He's a Liverpool fan. I can't really comment on it because I don't know anything about football because I have no interest in the sports. But football thing he's dragging you into a football conversation just eject eject right what's next uh we have this bit and then this bit here oh oh hello that was a boob i shouldn't have glued that bit on yet <laughs> you spoon oh well don't matter i'm gonna break anything am i it's not gonna kill anything it shows me not gluing the side piece on yet oh mr side piece uh, but I don't care because I've done it now. So it's too late now. Too late now, lad. I've already glued that thing on. <laughs> oh, bugger. Oh, there'll be some graying in the showers tonight. Well, there might be as well, actually. How's that supposed to fit on now? 
Oh, it's all gone a bit wrong. Has it gone wrong? It might have gone a bit wrong. Yeah, I'm not supposed to glue the side piece on yet. A eh. little bit of forcing may be required. Get in, lad. Get in. Go on. Have it. Have it large. Yeah, that's that's gone a bit awry now. No. Oh. Why didn't you tell me? In you go. There we go. There we go. No problem at all. See? It's perfectly fine. Yeah, you're not supposed to glue both sides on yet. Oh, never mind, never mind. Uh, okay, so that goes on there. I don't actually have to glue that if I don't want to. There's a bit of a, bit of a gap there. And that will sit on the top thusly, you see. However, before I glue this on, there's a different piece I want to glue on. And I think what we might do, oh, I was going to say, we could put some sprue glue or some sprue goo in this gap here, you see. However, I've got these big hooks in the way, and that's kind of going to be a pain in the butt. And I also think there's actually a bit to go on the back there anyway. Uh, there's the platform at the back, which I think... Now, I won't cover those up, but... Mm, I think we might just leave that gap there. It just looks like some kind of utilitarian gap. I could sprue glue it, but I can't really sand these bits without getting rid of those hooks, because the hooks will be in the way, so... I could sprue glue the middle bit. Let's get it glued in first, anyway. Let's get it glued. Bit of glue in there. Oh, they haven't just really contact, but we'll get some glue in there, anywho. Can't do any arm, lads. Can't do any arm. Guess that is that in there. Now, what I want to do, or rather what I don't want to do, just yet, necessarily, is glue this on. Because the issue we have here is that once I put this on here, can't get to that to paint it and also there's a little wheel that needs to go on here anyway so I'll do that bit now a little spinny wheel that's not going to glue at all is it never mind it's fine so what I need to do is get that little wheel on there first which is part number 28 part 28 which is this one here. In the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, we'll still have little piston spinny valve wheels. Because I reckon we will. Oh. <clears throat> Universal constant. Spinny valve wheels. Oops, Daisy. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. What I like to do with these little round things, apart from ping it across the desk over and over again, is uh, just round off the nub. Not get rid of it completely, but keep the keep the your sanding device moving over the curved surface. Don't go straight because you'll just flatten the curve. And then go in with the sanding stick, a sanding sponge that will squish to the shape. And that way I can sand it smooth. Give me a nice little twizzly wheel. And then that needs to go into the top of there. Which I shall use my new tweezers that Kenneth got me. Very, very nice. Kenneth bought me some very, very beautiful God Hand tweezers, which are fantastic. I have to tell you that, Kenneth. These are brilliant. I didn't realise they were God Hands until I actually looked at the label on the packet and thought, oh, they're actually God Hands. Wow. So we'll get some in there. We'll pop that on there like that. 
and we'll ping it across because I missed. Let's put some more glue in there because I totally missed and took too long. Little glue, and that can go on there like that. And in we go. There we go, just straighten it out. Lovely. Beautiful. I do like those tweezers, Kenneth. Thank you so much for those. A little bit of glue in there. So, when will you paint the widge? Says Team Inept. There'll be a widge mass, a widge day. There will be widge painting, don't worry. So, I've got a choice now because I will at some point need to glue that on there. And I'd rather glue that on now. So I can deal with any squidgy glue effects. Because if I paint all this and then try and glue this on, it's just going to make a mess with the glue going everywhere. But at the same time, I need it to lock in place and be flush. Now it can, so it does sort of go flush without me, but you get this big gap. I want to be able to pin it down and glue it in place. Mm, but I can't even really do that. So I don't want to make a massive mess. I've got this choice now. But if I do glue this on, it's going to be hard to get in there and paint that little cylinder with its little valves and little displays, which I would rather paint. To be, I mean, there'll be a lot of equipment on here, but I'd rather paint it if I can. So I'm torn now. I do not know. I do not know. And uh, then again, I, I might be able to get a brush in there. Yeah, I probably can. Yeah, I probably can. Yeah, I should be right. I'll get a brush in there. No problemo. People are talking about widge painting again. Honestly, you boys and your widges. Just want to get some glue under there. Oops, easy. Now I've got to be careful here because when I did my chimera. I did this and I made a bit of a mess of this joint and it just kind of ended up me having to sand it and then deal with a lot of rivets that I had to sand away. Sorry, knocking the camera. So I don't want all the glue to splooge out here if I can avoid it. I want it to be a nice clean splooge. Splooge free squidge, if you know what I mean. Okay, that's cool. That's come out all right. That's not so bad. A lot less messy than when I did the Chimera. <clears throat> it's the thing with me. If I do the first time I build the kit, I'm gonna make a bit of a hash of it here and there. Second time I build the kit, it'll be a bit easier because I'll know what I'm doing a bit more. The third time I build the kit, yeah, I probably lose the will to live at that point because that's the third time I built the kit. Seriously, there's only so many times I can build a damn kit. So that is in. Jolly D. Jolly D. So there we go. That's nicely. So I've not made a big hash of the, the bits here with the rivets. There's a bit of splodger glue come out, but that'll be that'll disappear once it's primed. You won't see that. It's just because it's a different shininess. So there we go. So you can see it's the same, exactly the same frame and chassis as the Chimera. It's just this bit and that bit are different. And that's how these work. There's a few variants of these, and they're all basically the same, but with different stuff on the top. Uh, now I need to glue the other side on. <laughs> yeah. Right, so after that, we've just got to glue the bolter on. And some other bits and bobs. So what I'll do, I'll probably leave it there. And we'll crack on with this. We'll carry on with this next time. What I might do, tell you what I'm going to do, just to show you. I was saying about sprue glue earlier on. See if I can get this to zoom in a bit or focus or something. Adjust my camera edge. Can I zoom in? Okay, so you see here we've got this gap here along here. I can't really do much about these two bits. Where's my pointy? Can't do much about these two bits because it's going to be a nightmare to sand down there without getting rid of these two hooks, these hooks that are underneath. But what I can do is fill this bit in so these bits don't look quite so bad. Because if I fill those two bits, if I fill this bit and leave these bits here, it just looks like maybe two pieces of metal that have been welded together. But if I fill this in, 
looks like a single piece so what we can do this is where your sprue goo comes in get the lid off uh, this is where sprue goo comes in great because it's for little fine gaps like that it's absolutely brilliant and we'll show you this next time get your sprue goo the only reason this is slightly blue by the way it's blue sprue goo is because i put some blue gray bits of um sprue in it i'm just going to blop it on there like that doesn't matter if it's a big blop or a little blop how far it sticks up does not matter as long as it fills the gap now it will drop down and sink a little tiny bit as it dries but not much that's why you want it thick if this was very thin then all this would do right now is to go shoom, into the gap and disappear you never see it again because it's because it's nice and thick i hope that was on camera because i forgot i zoomed in you're way down to the bottom left oh, oh, sorry about that so yes yeah, so i put a big blop on it there if it was very thin it would just scoot down into the gap and you'd be knackered but because it is nice and thick it just sits there and it will stay that shape it will shrink a little tiny bit but not much uh, and then when we come back next week we can sand that down and it'll fill that gap so it's not going to fill these gaps obviously I, I, but there's no way for me to really get a sanding stick or a file in there without risking see i can't get that maybe get in there but it's going to be a ball lake so i'm not i'm going to leave those as they are they just look like utilitarian bits of chunks of steel or something at least if we fill in this bit it removes the impression that this is just two pieces stuck together with a gap it gives it some sort of i'm just making up excuses now so let's zoom back out again there we go you know what i mean it looks a bit more like something that isn't that i can't really put it into words it looks less like a seam line and more like just two bits of steel that actually have a natural panel gap there. Uh, have a quick look at the chat <clears throat> the chatty chat <clears throat> uh, let's have a look when will you paint the wood says paul do 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 oops team inept when the witch calls for him says jamie baron kenneth has a heart of gold and stop moving stay Kenneth has a heart of gold and Vegemite. Oh yeah, I like Vegemite. Vegemite's most pleasant. Uh, Dave says, yeah, Paul, he could paint the widge and have it standing next to the tank, modelling it like an arms show. And big spiders, says Dad, about Kenneth. My dad goes for the treat now and then, so I'll go along, and so we sit at different ends each time, says Tyrone Key. We're we talking about football. Who go, he goes to watch Villa for a treat, says Paul. The poor man. I don't do football, so I'll, I'll move away from that one. What to do next? Start the Seraphon or paint a quick blind box Ultramarine? Ultramarine, Dave. Jamie agrees. Do it in steel and roast the bejesus out of it. Like the Millennium Falcon, then, Fox. Uh, what we're talking about there? Brother Garris, it is then. Did you finish the strike roof yet? Uh, no, I am in the process of doing the backpack. The strike move is coming along nicely. We have some parts. Basically, all the base colours down are on the move now. Uh, I need to get this gloss coated so that I can do the decals. Uh, the gloss coating was afoot and would have been done. There's some other bits painted there, you see. There's that intake that I showed on the thing the other day. Um, uh, that would have been done except I had to replace or I've had to order some new airbrush cleaning brushes there's, yeah, there's two of the, the two big weapons big weapons uh, I had to replace the air well my airbrush cleaning brush is basically exploded whilst I was cleaning my airbrush so I put the airbrush cleaning brush in the airbrush went like to get it in there and get all the gunk out and all the bristles fell out so I was left with a piece of wire and an airbrush full of bristles. I'm like, oh, flipping heck. So I'd spend half an hour kind of trying to get all these bristles out my airbrush, which is not as easy as it sounds. You can't just flush water through it. It doesn't it took me ages. Anyway, so I've ordered some more. They have just arrived this morning. So what I'm going to be doing tomorrow is getting a gloss coat on the backpack parts. Uh, and then I'm going to get the decals on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a live stream, another live stream while I'm doing the decals. I haven't filmed any of this. Because this project is so far behind now that I just need to get it done. Uh, and I have to just not worry too much about filming it. Which is a pain because I'd like to film things and show you how I do them. But 
that build is so far behind schedule. I need to get it done. It needs to get done and sent off to Jordan. So, yeah, because he's been waiting for it so patiently. It's a Patreon reward build, and it's like, you know, a year late. So I need to get it done, sent off to him. Uh, so, yes, I'm going to do a live stream uh, in the next couple of days doing the decals. Uh, and then it'll probably then just be done. And I'll probably put a video up saying, here you go, it's finished. Because I just need to get it done. Um, so that series will kind of finish on a bit of a sudden end. Uh, once that's done, I can do my little U-boat free models. And then it's doing the uh, Sazabi Vercar. And then once that's done, it's on to the perfect great Millennium Falcon. And then once the Millennium Falcon is done, I'm completely free. I can do whatever I want. Yes. Although I'll have more Patreon builds to do by that point anyway, probably. So I'll probably be doing more Patreon builds. But we'll see. Um, so yes, so that's going to be the next few days. So there will be a live stream, probably probably Tuesday or Wednesday, maybe. Uh, once I've got it gloss coated, getting the decals on that thing, and then uh, I'll probably just finish it because it just needs after after the decals are done, it needs a little bit of tiny weathering and just assembling. It's done then. So there we go. So Jordan, nearly finished, nearly finished. <sighs> Apologies, it's taking so long. So uh, yeah, we're going to call it there. Let's have a quick look at what chat is doing. Uh, what is chat doing? Mm -mm -mm. so Abhi Abadar says so got some good news and some bad news good news I'm going to have way more free time bad news I have to tell my team they're closing down the division of find new job oh dear oh sorry to hear that dude hang on does having more free time mean you're out of a job as well That's that's that kind of negates the good news completely <laughs> sorry about that dude hope you find something soon uh, brother Titus, the sergeant and the officer type fella are the three I am missing says Dave butcher that model all hail the sprue glue, Fox, 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 National Express. It's, it's all right. It's, it's not in my head now. It's gone. I've had other things. It's easily removed. Bit of Spanish flea and it's gone. There you go. Or music to drive by. It also gets rid of uh, anything like that. Uh, you know he could paint the widge in a banana hammock. And all that grey plastic won't paint itself. Be right back making a brew, says Dave. Uh, in other news, 24 hour cure and that epoxy is bollocks. Super glue it shall be. FFS. Paul Paul's making something. He was trying to do like some like special 24 hour cure glue and it just didn't work. Epoxy mixy thing. Can you just get epoxy glues that don't have two parts? I'm sure you can. Fox, if I use C1 on a frame, is it okay to paint small details on top? Um, yep, absolutely. That's exactly what I did. I can't show you because it's in the box, but that's exactly what I did on the Strike Rouge. Um, if you're just painting in little bits on top, like bits of, you know, I did, um, I did the gloss black for the frame parts, glued all the frame into, into shape. And this is what I'll do on the Sazabi as well. Gloss black on the frame, uh, see one it, and then you can go in, you can paint, as long as you're using water-based acrylics, not lacquers, um, just paint it over some gold and some of the silver bits. Just, it, it doesn't really do any harm. It might take a couple of coats. The first coat might look, if it's a metallic colour, it might not look quite as shiny as you expect because it's going to soak into the powder so if you need to just do a second coat but yeah it's absolutely fine uh, if you're just doing little bits of details here and there don't don't expect to be doing any funky complex masking and paintwork and stuff probably not going to happen but if you've got little details like little pistons or bolts and screw heads and things or whatever you get on say gundam frame to paint in you can do it so i've done that it's it's fine um Will the Perfect Grade Falcon be more than six episodes? It will be the final episode. I can guarantee you 100% the final episode will be episode six. It's as much as I'm going to say. It's as much as I'm going to say. Uh, in other news, 24 hour cure. Oh, no, I've done that one. Uh, well, we'll finally get all those kits painted, says Aviad. <laughs> yeah, not, the, not for the best reasons, but you will. That's true. Uh, I think all epoxies are two part the hardener and the uh, adhesive, I guess. You could be right. Hardener in the resin and get Z poxy. You'll never have to worry. Uh, that's what I'm going to do on my Cesarbi Fox as LD. Yeah, actually on the Cesarbi, I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to give it a shiny frame. But um, yeah, that's what I've done on the on the on the Strike Rouge. C1 over the gloss black and then just painted in little details and not massive chunks of detail like uh, I, I can't show you because it's it's in the box and it's also wrapped in protective stuff. But like on here, for example, I've got the intake there on the wing. It might well say this the whole thing was C1. It might be that I painted just those intakes with a, a different, like a gold or something. Or, you know, um, only for it's only really good for tiny little details. Like if this was part of the model, this little alligator clip, then what I might do is C1 the whole thing and then just paint this little bit of rivet gold. As long as it's a tiny area and you're just doing it with uh, acrylic paints, 
and you're just being careful it should be absolutely fine another thing i've discovered as well if you see one metalizer let's say you've seen one something say i see one this was a plastic pot and i see one that uh, and i suddenly found there was a big sanding mark there that i hadn't got rid of don't panic because what i did in a couple of places was i'd had something that was c1 there'd be a big sanding scratch all i did was i sanded it more sanded it smooth got rid of the sanding mark and just put c1 over it even though it was onto the bare plastic um if i hadn't gone through the primer it's great but if, even if i'd gone through the primer to the bare plastic just put c1 on it if it's a small area because it's on shiny gray plastic it's not going to look exactly the same as the surrounding but it's so close nobody will know and if it's a tiny area so for little touch-ups you can actually just put c1 straight over the bare plastic it'll it'll grip to that just as well as it'll grip to the shiny primer so you're absolutely fine people talking about uh, amazon prime i don't know why uh right so i think that's going to do us anyway i shall leave that there we'll leave that to cure we'll carry on with this next week I'm kind of running out of things to do on these streams now. At some point, I'm going to have nothing left to build. I'm going to have to paint figures or something. I'll warn you now, if we do get to the point where I'm painting figures, I'm probably not going to say much. I really will be sitting there going, and you'll just see the top of my head, because it's not easy. Um, what am I going to say? Announcements. Uh, don't forget, tomorrow is Monday, and it's eModels Monday. The eModels team are back doing their live stream on the eModels YouTube channel, eModels.co.uk. Um... Uh, we'll be, Ted, Chris and I will be doing that again tomorrow night uh, it's back to the email stream don't forget of course if you watch the email stream it's gallery giveaway tomorrow it's that time of the month when we do a gallery giveaway I think um, so that'll be us 9pm tomorrow night so do tune in for that don't forget uh, on Chris's channel Gross Models he's in the chat click on uh, his follow his link to his name uh, to his channel uh, 8pm tonight he'll be doing his Warhamster stream so do tune in and watch that uh, it's all good stuff um, what else what else Yes, I'll do a live stream throughout the week for the decals on the Strike Rouge. It's not because I'm going to be showing you you want to learn how to put decals on the Strike Rouge. I've shown you that. It's just so I can give you some content off the Strike Rouge. And if I'm going to be doing decals, I may as well hang out with you guys. Uh, and then once that's done, uh, the next uh, Warhammer Conquest video should be up in the next few days as well. Because I've just got some finishing touches to put on that. And then we're done with that one. So I think that's going to do us. As usual, I need to go for a great big wee. So I'm going to make this wrap up a bit quicker. In fact, I said this 50 minutes ago. It's almost six o'clock now. So, uh, yes, anyway, so that's going to do us. So thank you very much to everyone who's watched. Remember, if you did win a sticker tonight, uh, just send me an e-model to fox at modelmakingguru.com with your name and your address and tell me which sticker you won. Even if you sent an email previously for another sticker and I've still got, still waiting for that, I need to know how many stickers you need. So if you've got five emails in my inbox from you and I've got to send you five stickers. Uh, and don't forget, of course, if you'd like to help support this channel, you're more than welcome to. I, su I survive on your donations. So uh, patreon.com forward slash model making guru. This is my job. I do this for my income. So I absolutely depend on the support my followers give me. So uh, if you... If you want to help out on Patreon, please do. If you're not able to, don't worry. You can help out by just simply subscribing to this channel. Or if there's an advert when you start watching one of my videos, just watch the advert all the way through. It helps me out because I make a little bit of money. And last of all, don't forget, I do have an affiliate store on Amazon. So if you need to pick up any model making gear, it'll be in the description below this video. So look down there. Uh, under all my videos, there's a big long list. There's a li link to the store and there's a big long list of just stuff you might need for your model making adventure. So if you need to pick something up from Amazon, you think, oh, I need some glue or I need some this or that, I'll go on Amazon and pick it up. Before you just go and find it and buy it, have a look in my little Amazon store. It might be a link to it in there. Uh, and if you do go through that link on my Amazon store, I make a little bit of tiny income off that. It doesn't cost you more, just means I get a little bit of commission off that. So do go and check out that link first before you go and buy anything on Amazon. But that's going to do us. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, do take care of yourselves. Uh, I shall see you tomorrow night for the eModels live stream and then throughout the week for the other live stream. But take care of yourselves. I've got to go and queue. I always forget to queue things up, don't I? It's kind of rubbish. Uh, I shall get that ready. Uh, do take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. Yes, you there. You there. Be awesome. And until next time, when we carry on with this thing down here, I shall bid you adieu and... I forgot what I was going to say. I don't know. I'm just going to press a button now. Adios, amoebas.
Wait, could you actually hear that music then? Tell me in chat, because it wasn't saying you could hear the music, and I don't know if my audio was working. Could you actually hear that music then, or were you not hearing the national anthem? Tell me, I need to know, I need to know before I go. Even though I'm dying for a wee, I need to know this right now. Could you hear the Canadian national anthem play? Yes. Excellent. Thank you, Jamie. Right. <laughs> I just, it wasn't showing me on the meter. I'm like, there's no audio. What, is my audio broken again? Yes, quite loud too, says Chris. Oh, yes, old man. Goodbye now. Anyway, take care of yourselves. Catch you next time. I've got to figure out how to make this play from the start now. Hang on. Oh.